Mm-hmm. I bet. Just a minute. It lives, I see. Do you want to speak with Lolita? I'm sorry, but Gabriel is allowed. Oh, I mean, he's out. Yeah, if he ever comes back, I'll tell him. You know, you could do better. I know I don't know you, but you could do better. Good morning. The phone's been ringing off the hook all morning. Let me know when you want your messages. Yeah. Gee, you're lively. Did you have another nightmare last night? Sort of. Mm-hmm. I told you it's that voodoo book you're researching. That stuff can seriously screw up your karma. I'm sure that's it. Maybe I should write a horror novel on passive resistance instead. <sighs> so don't sleep. It's your body. Anyway, your handheld tape recorder came today. Really? Great. I can't wait to see what human rights you violate with this one. I can't wait to violate them. For example, if you would just let me... And I located some local voodoo references for you. Dixieland Drugstore and the Historical Museum of Voodoo. Both are right here in French Quarter. How would I ever manage without you? You? Give me a break. The devil himself couldn't change you. Well, if the devil had great legs, perhaps, like yours. And a riveting personality, I'm sure. Well, if you need any more research done, just ask. It's not as though we're swamped with customers. St. George Books could use some serious renovation, but Gabriel likes to think that the place has character. Today's newspaper is on the counter. Times Picohune, dated June 18, 1993. The front page has an article about the voodoo murders. The article says that the victims are all identified as members of the underworld. The general public of New Orleans is in no danger. Police claim the so-called voodoo trappings found at the crime scenes are fake, a scare tactic, and that the murders are not associated with any genuine practitioners. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Potential storms ahead. Proceed with caution and do not get involved with anything new at this time. Right. The books on the table have been chosen for their special appeal. Recent fiction by the biggies. In other words, nothing written by Gabriel. The magnifying glass is a handy item for reading old manuscripts or the fine print on Gabriel's lease. Mind if I borrow the magnifying glass? No, Sherlock. Just bring it back when we get the next estate shipment. No problem. There's a pair of tweezers on the counter. Grace uses them for book repair work. I'm going to take the tweezers for a bit. Good. You're beginning to look a little scruffy. Just trying to make you feel at home. Cute gargoyle, eh? Three snakes in a skull. Gabriel's father painted it. What a wacky, offbeat kind of guy Daddy was. The curtain doesn't provide much privacy. But Gabriel's rarely in his bedroom doing shop hours anyway. Don't mind if I do. Do what? Oh, nothing. Gabriel looks at the cash register. 
checking for cobwebs. Gabriel opens the cash register to examine the take, or in the case of St. George books, the mistake. It's a gift certificate left over from yet another dismal failure of a promotion. The cash register contains about $20 in small bills and chairs. I trust you can live without this old gift certificate. Knock yourself out. So, what's new, Grace? Your use of mathematics, for one thing. These books are unbelievable. What can I say? I refuse to be bound by rules. The strap marks on your bedpost speak otherwise. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? What can you tell me about voodoo? I didn't know much of anything about it, until you started researching it for your book. Now I know that it's active in the city. There's that shop and museum. It can clearly be dangerous in the wrong hands. You should be careful investigating it. Do you know anything else about voodoo? I've told you all I know. Sorry, I can't be more help. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Just what I read in the paper, same as you. What do you know about the voodoo murders? You won't get far questioning me about it, Sherlock. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Well, I've only been here two months, but I love it. It's so much more alive than any place I've been. It feels like anything's possible here. What else can you tell me about New Orleans? You're the native. Don't ask me. Tell me about yourself, Grace. Yeah, right, Knight. I mean it. What do you want to know? How come we haven't gone out yet? I'm still waiting around for that lobotomy. As soon as I get it, I'll let you know. How do you like working at St. George's Books? Well, it's not exactly a huge intellectual challenge. Although the math in your record books could confuse Einstein. Still, I love old books, and it's a nice way to pay the bills while I explore the city for a summer. If you ever pay me, that is. What do you do after work? Well, I either go to my oil painting class or my Tai Chi. You know that. You know, you can go overboard with this improving yourself stuff. You don't want to alienate us mere mortals. I suppose I should just allow my mind and body to atrophy. Works for me. How old are you? Old enough to know about men like you. Just tell me anything at all. I just got my master's in history and classics. My folks wanted me to go on right away for my PhD, but 18 years of school was enough. I needed a break. Just tell me anything at all. I came to New Orleans because I'd read so much about it and I thought, you know, spending a few months here would clear my head. Just tell me anything at all. I've always wanted to do something really adventurous, you know? Something real life. I'm sick of libraries and lecture halls. Nothing, I guess. Never mind. Sit yourself. Do you have messages for me? Dana called, and uh, Susie left a message about a lawsuit. Toss him. Okie dokie. There's more when you want them. Do you have more messages for me? Your grandmother called. I keep meaning to get over there. What did she say? Did she sound good? She sounded great, and we had a nice little chat about you. Grace? Don't worry. 
I didn't go into detail about your cardinal sins. Not that anything about you could surprise her. She adores you anyway. She's my girl. But she said to remind you to stop by and go through your father's things. Hmm. Okay. Do you have more messages for me? Here's a strange one. You got a call from someone named Wolfgang Ritter? He said he was calling from Germany. He told me it was urgent, maybe you should give him a call. Call Germany? Like hell. If it's really important, he'll call back. Well, fine. Let's just hope he's not with the German lottery for pitiful American authors. Do you have more messages for me? Your friend Detective Mosley called. Talkative, isn't he? Especially with you. What do you want? He left an interesting message. He told me to tell you that his mother's maiden name is Humphrey. Oh, that's H-U-M-P-H-R-E-Y. Fascinating. And that he left some photos for you at the station. At the front desk. It's about time. Gabriel. Those photos wouldn't have anything to do with the voodoo murders, would they? Now, why would you say something like that? Because I know you. You're getting privileged information, aren't you? Did you tell him you'd put him in your new voodoo book? A writer has certain obligation to his readers, you know. Gabriel, you know you'll never put him in your book. Your main character is a female orthodontist. You're gonna be reincarnated as a pit bull if you keep screwing with your karma. As long as it's a male pit bull with a really big... That's enough. Thanks. Anyway, that's all the messages. Thank God. The top shelf contained books on animals including snakes and other reptiles. Gabriel pulls down a book on snakes. Snakes are legless reptiles. Some snakes kill their prey with poison, some by constriction. A snake smells by tasting the air with its forked tongue. The smells are passed back to a sense organ in the mouth. Constrictor snakes, however, sense their prey by vibration. Hmm. Did you know that medieval legends about dragons and giant worms are actually based on snakes? You know, dragons, devils, sea monsters, well, they've always been associated with snakes. Grace, get alive. The top shelf contains a set of German books that once belonged to Gabriel's grandfather. Gabriel selects a volume of German poetry that he always found strangely compelling. Drei Drachen. Drei Drachen kriechen in meinen Schlaf. Die Seele wollen sie lebendig zum Fraß. Feurigen Atems, gespeltener Zunge, genießen sie jedes Mal. That's nice. Kind of creepy, though. Who's the author? Heinz Ritter. I'm not sure what it says, but I get the feeling the guy was one sick puppy. Under the window are reference books, dictionaries, foreign language dictionaries, quotation books, and others. Gabriel borrows them often when he's writing. Gabriel leaves through a German-English dictionary. Let's see, mid-tag means midday noon. Gabriel leaves through a German-English dictionary. Spiel means game. Interesting. Gabriel leaves through a German-English dictionary. Himmel means heaven. Aha. Uh -huh. Gabriel leaves through a German-English dictionary. Dry means three. Gabriel leaves through a German-English dictionary. Possessing means possessed. That's handy to know. 
Gabriel leaves through a German-English dictionary. Drachen means dragons. I wonder if Mosley would know he was being insulted if I called him Drachenbread. Gabriel's bedroom is also his office, his studio, and library. The typewriter is beginning to accumulate cobwebs. Should I feel guilty? Nah. Gabriel's mini stereo isn't exactly high fidelity. Then again, neither is he. It's frightening. It's terrifying. Don't miss. Run for your life. Now playing at the state and to on the theater. Mardi Gras mementos left by some female or other. It's Gabriel's bed, unmade as usual. The dresser holds a meager supply of underwear and 38 pairs of mismatched socks. There's a flashlight on the dresser. This building's wiring leaves a lot to be desired. A poster on the wall advertises Mardi Gras, the biggest party of the year in New Orleans. I might need a flashlight. Jeans and t-shirts. A little cold bubbly and brie cheese is about all Gabriel's fridge ever has in it. Bills from last Christmas gather dust on the door. It's Gabriel's bathroom. I really gotta get around to cleaning up in there. The medicine cabinet contains a few old prescriptions personal hygiene stuff, and lots of hair products, including some hair gel. I'll take this hair gel. You never know when you'll need a touch-up. I'll be back later. See ya! The official seal of the New Orleans Police Department highlights the tile flow. Gabriel is standing in the lobby of his friend Mosley's precinct. It smells like a cross between a hospital and brewery. A uniformed officer of the New Orleans Police Department. She's not bad. The desk sergeant looked like a poster boy for heart disease. Thirty extra pounds between his armpits and his belt, and a complexion of consistency of grey oatmeal. In other words, a typical product of good southern cooking. Hey, nice precinct. Think so? That's peachy. That means more to me than you could know. Hey, it's a beignet guy. Great, I'm starved. Thank you. 
Stay put, you. Hey, grab me three, would ya? Sure. Thanks. Kinda quiet in here today. Yeah, summer's like that. It's too muggy to mug, too hot to heft. How clever. It's a gift. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? What can you tell me about voodoo? Me? Nothing. I'm a Catholic boy. What can you tell me about voodoo? I told you, I ain't got nothing to say about voodoo. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I'm not allowed to give out information on police cases. What can you tell me about New Orleans? I'll tell you, I'm glad as hell it's not Mardi Gras. If it weren't for that one month a year, being a cop in New Orleans would be a real pleasure. As it is, I'd rather stick behind this desk. Are you sure you can't give me the scoop on the voodoo murders case? Hey buddy, do I look like the kind of low life that'd betray my sacred oath to this department? I don't know. What would that kind of low life look like? Like hamburger meat if I got a hold of them. Kinda like what you're gonna look like in about five seconds. Okay, okay, sorry I asked. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Best food in the world. You can get it right here in New Orleans. Muffalata sandwiches. Mmm. Mmm. Beignets, good Cajun coffee. Yep. Man can die happy in this city. Tell me about yourself. Who, me? I'm the Death Sergeant Frick, why? Frick? That's right. You got a problem with that? Not at all. Tell me about yourself. You see that front door? Yeah? Well, I watch people come in. See this book? Yeah? Well, I write people's names in it, see? People that bother me. Want me to put your name in this book? Uh, I think not. That's what I thought. Tell me about yourself. I hate people who ask stupid questions. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's out at a crime scene. Sorry. About Detective Mosley. I told you he's not here. Where is the crime scene? Is it related to the voodoo murders? Crime scene information is police confidential. We don't need any more looky-loos than are probably already there. Come on, you can tell me what the crime scene is. Look, I know the papers got everybody stirred up about these killings, but that don't make it public information. Back off. So this is a new voodoo murder then? Hey, I didn't say that. You'll read all about it in the papers tomorrow, I'm sure. I was supposed to pick up some photos from Detective Mosley at the front desk. Is that right? And who are you? My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Yeah. I got something for you, all right. As soon as you're done talking, I'll give it to you.
Here's that envelope for you, Gabriel Knight. Thanks. The envelope has Gabriel's name written on it, Miss Bell. Gabriel opens the manila envelope and finds two photographs. One of the photos from Mosley is an official voodoo murders crime scene shot. A graphic close-up of a victim. The photograph of Mosley was apparently taken upon his graduation from the police academy. He, he had hair then. I'm so glad you stopped by. Sorry it's been a while, Grandma. Not at all. Give us a kiss. Now come and sit down. Tell me how you're doing. Gabriel grew up in this room. Just being here make him feel safe. And after about five minutes, claustrophobic. On the wall are portraits of Gran and Gramps when they were young. Gabriel's inherited some good-looking genes. That's my Gran, adorable as always. You're such a tease. How you been, Gran? Just fine, dear. I'm sorry I bothered you at work. But I was hoping you'd get a chance to go through your father's things in the attic. Don't be silly. You can call me anytime. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? What an odd question, Gabriel. Of course, you always were interested in monster movies and all that other weird stuff. You get that from your father and granddad. I don't know anything about it, dear. Of course, it was very big in New Orleans at one time, but you don't hear about it so much these days. Too much else in the world to worry about, I guess. What can you tell me about voodoo? I don't know what else to tell you, dear. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Oh, Gabriel, nothing. And I don't want to. I sometimes wonder what this world is coming to. What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans is very southern. Of course, though, not as much as it used to be when I was a girl. It's gotten much more influenced by the East Coast and that California stuff. Still, it hasn't changed as much as other places, I reckon. We've always been happy here. What can you tell me about New Orleans? My goodness, boy! You've lived here all your life just like me. I can't tell you much that you don't already know. You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Oh, you! <laughs> tell me about yourself. Me? Oh, surely you have something more interesting to talk about. Oh, come on, Gran. All right, dear. What do you want to hear? What do you do all day? You know how I love to knit and work in my garden. I also take long walks. It's the only way to keep an old body like mine from stiffening up. You're not old. Oh, don't be foolish. I'm older than the hills. Tell me about before you met Granddaddy. 
Well, you know I was born Rebecca Wright. My daddy owned a lot of land outside of town. We grew peas, corn, cotton, all kinds of things. It was a good childhood, but my father was very strict. He didn't much let me out of his sight. Tell me how you met Granddaddy. I met Harrison at a church revival. There was a traveling preacher back then, a big fella named Reverend Jim. I even remember his slogan, Come to me to find your way. Your granddad was sitting right behind me and my girlfriend Alma, and at one point, old Reverend Jim was flinging his hair around with his fryer and brimstone annex, and a piece of it, one of those small add-on dues for man, went flying off. I swear, Harrison and I were the only ones that noticed. We both started laughing to beat the band. Everyone looked at us like we were a couple of loonies. It was then I knew that he was for me. How you feeling these days? Fit as a fiddle, and don't you worry your head about it. Just tell me anything at all. I had your father when I was 22. The doctors told me I couldn't have any more after him, so I'm afraid I spoiled him rotten. Just tell me anything at all. I never loved any man but your grandfather, and I never will. Just tell me anything at all. I hate to admit it, but I was a jealous little thing when your granddad and I were younger. I loved him so ferociously. And he did attract the eyes of the ladies, whether he wanted to or not. Oh, nothing. Never mind. All right, dear. I'm going to go up to the attic, Gran. Be careful of the dust. Grandma's attic is a storehouse of forgotten treasures and useless junk. A skylight lets welcome sunlight into the attic. That box of knick-knacks has been up there for at least five years. It's a lady's hat from the 1920s. From Grand's Virginia Woolf period. Gabriel has seen these ornaments every year at Christmas for as long as he can remember. There's a sketchbook on the chair that Gabriel vaguely remembers as his father's. I think I'll take Daddy's sketchbook with me. Images haunt the pages of Philip Knight's sketchbook the way they must have haunted his mind. The images touch a deep card in Gabriel. So familiar are they that he finds it hard to believe they aren't from his own subconscious. An elaborate mechanical clock, probably of German origin is among the discarded treasures of the attic. It doesn't seem to be running at the moment. The face of the clock is hand-painted. A ring of six symbols surround the face of the clock. A sword, a sun, an angel, a noose, an eclipse, and a dragon. There's an interesting design in the base of the clock. Granddaddy, you old fox. 
The photo, probably at least 50 years old, shows two young men standing with an older man outside a castle. I wonder who they are. It's an old letter on fancy paper. The old photographs show Gabriel's grandfather with two other men that Gabriel has not identified. The letter is written in German, but Gabriel determines what he can about it. It was sent from a place called Schloss Ritter in Rittersburg, West Germany. The letter is addressed to mein Sohn Heinz and signed Wilhelm Ritter. One of the reoccurring words strewn throughout the letter is the word Schattenjäger. The only thing that Gabriel can decipher about the letter is a sense of urgency in the handwriting and in the heavy use of quill tip bold strokes and underlining. That's it. Take a load off, hon. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Oh, you. <laughs> Tell me about our family. Who would you like to hear about? Your granddad, your father, or your mother? Tell me something about granddad. Your granddad immigrated to America when he was 21. He worked his way through school, met and married me, and we had your father, Philip. Tell me something about granddad. Your granddad supported me and your father with bookkeeping. I'll tell you what, though. He hated every minute of it. Didn't really like bookkeeping one bit. Maybe that was why he had the worst luck with jobs. Oh, the night he'd come home afraid to tell me he'd lost another. <laughs> and I would tell him it didn't matter to me. But he felt ashamed, Gabriel. Tell me something about Grandad. Harrison was only 36 when he died. Your father was eight years old at the time. Your Grandad was hit by a streetcar in the business district. Took me nearly a year to believe he was really gone. I'm sorry, Gran. I know you are, dear. Tell me something about Grandad. Did you know that your granddad was a poet? He was! He wrote the most beautiful poetry for me when we were courting. I always thought he should have done something with that gift. But he was such a practical man. Didn't believe in chasing after dreams. Tell me something about granddad. I don't know what else to tell you, dear. Tell me about my father. Your father was my only child. How we adored him. Philip suffered from terrible nightmares, just like your granddad did. They were two peas in a pod. Tell me about my father. When Philip met your mother, it was love at first sight. They were married two weeks later. Never looked at a girl seriously until then. And he looked at plenty. You have your father's way with women, Gabriel. And your granddad's. Oh. 
Tell me about my father. I wanted to just lay down and die when he and your mother were killed in that car crash when you were only eight. It was the thought of taking care of you that kept me going, Gabriel. The police say your father swerved off the road after being frightened by something. Perhaps a deer in the road or a wild cat. Tell me about my father. Your granddad wanted Philip to have a normal life. He was obsessed by that thought. He pushed Philip to go to law school. But Philip was driven to art. He painted almost in a daze. He would get so inside himself when he worked. Tell me about my father. He always hated it that it was Margaret's money that supported the three of you when his painting couldn't. I kept telling him, try something more cheerful, like a landscape or two. But he couldn't do it. His work was just too dark and disturbing for the public, you know. Tell me about my father. I don't know what else to tell you, dear. Have you baked any of your incredible molasses pies lately? No, dear. But you let me know when you want some, and I'll whip up half a dozen. Tell me about my mother. Your mother was Margaret Templeton when your father met her. She came from a very wealthy Creole family in New Orleans. She was beautiful and reckless. She was madly in love with your father, of course, but I also think she liked defying her family. Since you're so interested in family history these days, why don't you go by St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 and visit the family tomb? It would be a sweet gesture. Maybe I will. Tell me about my mother. Your mother's family refused to give her money after the marriage. All she had left was a modest trust fund from a great aunt, who happened to like Philip. The remainder of your mother's trust fund became yours when she died. That's what you used to open your bookshop. Tell me about my mother. The Templetons are all gone now. Every last one of them. They never wanted anything to do with us, of course. What a waste. Tell me about my mother. I don't know what else to tell you, dear. Do you know anyone named Heinz Ritter? Heinz Ritter? Oh, Gabriel, where did you hear that name? I found a letter in Granddaddy's clock. I promised I'd never tell you or your father, but I suppose it doesn't matter now. Tell me, Gran. Your granddad's name was Heinz Ritter before he came to America. He changed it to Harrison Knight legally when he arrived. Why did granddad change his name? I don't know. I tried to ask him about his family, his life before America, but he didn't want to talk about it. He never even told me about his name change. I found that one day when I saw his passport in a drawer. Since he obviously found it painful, I never questioned him about it. But I'm sure it wasn't trouble with the law. Your granddad was the best man I ever knew. Didn't granddad ever say anything about his past or his family? Only that his family was crazy and that he never wanted to see them again. He believed in some family curse thought that he could spare Philip and Philip's children from what he called old nightmares. Whatever Harrison wanted to spare you, though, it cost him plenty. He never did sleep well, and he would often get a faraway guilty look in his eyes. He was wrestling with something he thought he should be doing, some place he thought he ought to be. I don't know how he could think that he should be anywhere but with me and our child. It's a terrible way to live. Do you know anything else about Heinz Ritter? I've told you all I know about your granddad's past. 
Have you ever heard of a Schattenjäger? 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 How odd, Gabriel. I haven't heard that word in years. My goodness, you've given me a chill. Your granddad used to say that sometimes in his sleep. Really? Do you know what it means? No, I'm afraid not. I asked him about it once. I don't think he answered me. Odd. Hmm. Thanks, Gran. Have you ever heard of a Schattenjäger? I don't know what else to tell you, dear. You've lost weight. Are you caught in a new man? Oh, Gabriel, don't be silly. You know there'll never be anyone but your granddad for me. Well, Gran, I better get going. All right, dear. A police officer is either off-duty or patrolling the park, or both. A cop has driven his motorcycle into the park. Something Gabriel would probably never get away with. On the motorcycle is a police radio. Homicide team attention. Jackson Square is a good place to rest while exploring the French Quarter and a great place to be entertained by local performers. A blues band entertains on the lawn. Now that's music. Anyone seen Joe? Good day, officer. Yeah, for you too. Keep moving. Could I ask you a few questions? Not now, buddy. I'm busy. I should have noticed that. Thanks. Yeah, right. That jazz band is pretty good. <laughs> of course, most jazz band in New Orleans are. Why, you nasty thing, you. I'll call the police, I will. A bronze statue of Andrew Jackson marks the center of Jackson Square. A Cajun band, inventive as always with their instruments, is having a good old time on the lawn. Funny how catchy that toe tapping can be. Is one of those mimes. Oh boy. You white faced geek! You wanna eat my fist? Cut that out! I told you to stop that! All right, mister. You want some of this? Gabriel picks up the headset and listens. Ambulance 91, have you located the crime scene? They've radioed for you three times. Damn! Did you say it was north of the Lake Retreat Country Club? South. Lakeside Drive, north of Piedmont Pier, south of the Country Club. 
Man, I don't know if it's the clouds out here today or what. Good thing this guy's already dead. Everyone's having trouble. Must have been hallucinogens in the coffee this morning. It's just so misty out here or something. I... Hey, I see a squad car. Got it, Molly. Thank God. Have a good one, 9 one Interesting. Stupid mime! Hey you! Get away from that bike! Sorry. The crime scene team is still at the site. Gabriel parks a bit out of the way and walks over to avoid adding to the general confusion. Hey, mostly. Huh? <sighs> Night, you wiener. I told you not to call me that. Feeling jumpy? Who, me? Don't be stupid. How'd you find me? Oh, I was just driving by. Mm-hmm. Well, for the book. But don't tell anyone I let you see this, huh? It's another one, as you can see. Same M.O. and no frickin' clues. We're still waiting on an ID for the body. That's disgusting. Isn't this a rather, uh, public area for this kind of thing? Yeah, they're frickin' ghosts, these guys. Lakeshore Drive isn't exactly the 10 Expressway, but it is open to the public. No reports of nothing. Now, who the hell is that? Day, Miss Getty. What's going on, officer? Detective Mosley, ma'am. We've got a little problem here, but nothing for you to be concerned about, Miss Getty. I see. Thank you, detective. And good day, gentlemen. Whoa, I'm in love. Forget it, that's Molly again. She's about as far out of your reach as the moon. Probably on her way to meet some guy with a yacht right now. Near here? The lake's a popular place for country clubs. If she's out here a lot, maybe she saw something or heard something. Man, nobody ever sees or hears nothing. I told you. Besides, you just don't go around bothering people like her. We've about wrapped it up, sir. It's another clean sweep. Yeah, let's get the meat wagon moving, then. Do you want to leave an officer here, sir? Nah. Just leave the tape up for a few days. Yes, sir. If you'll excuse us, sir, we'll take him away. Stick around and take notes for the book if you want. Watch out for the muck in the water, moccasins, though. I'll be back at the station. Stop by if you want to go over the case or not. Thanks. Lake Shore Drive runs round the entire lake. This is a particularly lonely stretch, but it's still a public road. Gabriel is on the sand and clay shore of Lake Pontchartrain. 
at the site where some our bastard got to see who the voodoo murderers really are. The site is now deserted. Out, out down the spot, will these pristine banks ne'er be cleaned again? There seems to be a pattern to the lines in the sand. But if there is a pattern, it's smeared. There's only one small area that's clearly defined. Hmm, let me try to get this down. The partial pattern from the crime scenes intrigues Gabriel. What does it mean? Lake Pontchartrain is impressive. It measures 24 miles across and stretches as far as the eye can see. But you wouldn't want to swim in it. Police tape marks off the crime scene. Patches of grass have managed to survive life on the banks of Lake Pontchartrain. The grass has a matted appearance there. There are marks in the grass, as though some heavy wire object had been set there. Something small and iridescent is barely visible among the indentations. It looks like a scale of some sort. Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to take the small iridescent scale. I think it's a snake scale, but it beats the hell out of me what kind. The banks of Lake Pontchartrain are rich with clay deposits. Hmm. Is that clay? Yuck! Hey, nice precinct. Think so? That's peachy. That means more to me than you could know. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's in his office. Go on back. Detective Mosley. Hard at work, I see. Night, I had a feeling you'd show up. Nice polyester. Looks like something Mosley keeps around for formal occasions. Mosley's office looks a lot like his room at college. That's funny. That window is a mirror on the other side. Mosley's desk has more groin on it than on his head. Mosley was one of those beefy guys in his youth. Now he's getting lumpy. The badge in his front coat pocket is set off particularly well by the gold polyester of his jacket. 
So, how's it hanging, bud? Lousy. I hate crime scenes. People are sick fucks, you know that night? I'm starting to get that impression. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. What can you tell me about voodoo? There's voodoo that goes on in this city, sure. I looked into it a bit at the beginning of this case. But the voodoo stuff found at the crime scenes is all faked. It doesn't have anything to do with the real stuff. I know, I asked some experts. It's intimidation tactics, that's all. What can you tell me about voodoo? I told you, don't worry about that part of it. It's all fake. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Lots. Can you be more specific? Do you know anything about the killers? At least 20 people attend the killings. We know this from the variety of footprints found at the scene. Footprints? Aren't those as good as fingerprints? Can be. But we'd have to have a suspect in custody first. And the suspect would have to match one of the few distinct prints we have. Most of the footprints are smudged, trodden over, unreadable. These guys are so casual in their expertise, it's madmen. Like they know we'll never find them. How many murders have there been so far? Seven murders have so far been linked to the Voodoo Murders case. Now, the first murder occurred about eight weeks ago. The M.O. was the same in each murder. Lake Ponchar Train was the seventh. What kind of evidence have you found? No fingerprints, a few bare footprints. Found a few fibers, but not many. The weirdest one was leopard fur. Leopard fur? Describe the crime scenes. Now there's the corpse itself, minus the heart. Around where the body was killed, we find marks and flour and blood. There are traces of wax from candles, red and black. Ordinary wax candles, so the lab reports. Also blood and feathers of chickens. Also goat's blood. And plenty of the victim's own, of course. What's the coroner say? The victim's heart is always ripped out of the chest and missing. We haven't located a single one of them. Lovely. Any idea what they do with them? Don't even want to know. Also, the coroner says some of the victims had heart attacks before the incision. Literally scared to death. The knife wounds are consistent with a long, narrow, wavy-edged knife. Probably a ritualistic dagger. Any witnesses? Nope. There's never been a single witness. No one's even heard a disturbance. It's damned weird. Like they just don't want people to see, and so nobody sees nothing. Know anything about the victims? The victims are all out of towners. We still don't know why. Oh, nothing, never mind. Sure, no problem. What can you tell me about New Orleans? You and me grew up together, you tell me. It's a pretty nice place, even seeing the stuff I see. You know. The quarter's getting a bit too wild, though. Getting hard to control. Not quite what it was when you and me used to hang here, but... Hell, I've never known anything else. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Uh, I'm too sentimental to say anything else about it. Do you know anything about snakes? The only thing I know about snakes is I don't like them. Have you ever heard of a Schutten Jaeger? No. Ha! <laughs> is that anything like a Chuck Jaeger? I don't think there's any relation. 
Tell me about yourself. For the book? Sure, why not? Okay, what do you want to know? How'd you like working on the police force? Are you kidding? You know I love being a cop. In New Orleans, it's the best place in the world to be one. What are your plans for the future? Well, you know, I don't like to count my chickens before they're hatched, but... I don't see why I can't be the chief of police of New Orleans someday. I already know the mayor, and my record is one of the best in the department. I'm sure it's just a matter of moments, mostly. Yeah, yeah, you'll see. Got any hobbies? Yeah, making your life miserable. I'm serious. Don't you shoot or chew or something like that? No, I'm a freaking ballet dancer. Jeez. Yeah, I was number one at the Louisiana State Fair Marksman Contest. I play trumpet, too. You know, put your lips together and blow. How's your home life? Oh, real funny, Knight. Why don't you just bring in some freaking salt? Well, you know Annie left me. My home life is shit. Right. Sorry about that. Just tell me anything at all. Remember how we used to play Monkey in the Middle? <laughs> we used to piss off our senior year teacher. What was her name? Ms. McKelly? You'd act like you were going to toss her an eraser or something. Then you'd throw it to me over her head. And we used to do it at your grand's, too. Like with the remote when she wanted to watch your soaps. Yep, and it was a great way to pick up women in the library hall. Oh, oh, those were the days. Just tell me anything at all. You know, my doctor told me I've got a little family of ulcers starting. I wish this case would end so I'd get some rest for a change. Just tell me anything at all. My back hurts. Oh, nothing, never mind. It's your dime. How about getting me some coffee? Coffee? You want coffee? Should that surprise you? Nah, you've always been a caffeine addict. It's just that what we got here hardly qualifies. So, I'm desperate. It's your stomach. I'll get you some when we're done talking. That long? <laughs> All right, I'll go now. Don't touch anything while I'm gone. Here, drink it. Thanks. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. Have you ever called a hair club for men? I'd rather have no hair than your hair, Knight. Do you know anything about the patterns around the bodies? Yeah, weird, huh? All seven victims had those little marks around them. We got all the marks on file, but we haven't figured out what, if anything, they mean. Can I see the other six patterns? Uh, sure. People like that kind of stuff, don't they? Might make the book seem more mysterious. Go talk to Officer Franks. Tell her I said you could see the file. Can I ask you a few questions, ma'am? I'm sorry, sir, but I really have to finish these reports.
Excuse me, officer. Yes. So, what's it like being a policewoman? The glamour never ceases. Excuse me, officer. Yes. Can you get a file for me? What file would that be? The voodoo murders file? Detective Mosley said I could see it. Really? Well, if he said so. There it is. You can look at it all you want, but don't leave this area with it, okay? And no photocopies either, I'm afraid. Of course, I understand completely. There's nothing of interest in the inbox at the moment. The police file contains partial patterns from the first six voodoo murders. I'm done. Yeah, thanks. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. I got those photographs you left for me. Really? Great. What'd you think? Astonishingly lifelike. Yeah, that's what I thought. Got any more ideas for photos for the book? A cop author photo might be nice. You and me? Together? Why not? Of course, you'll have to try to tone down your masculinity. Well, okay. Now I'll call the police photographer. Franks, come here a minute, would you? And bring your camera. What did you need, Detective Mosley? We need a picture, please. And make it a good one, huh, sweetheart? Sure, sweetheart. Say, chintzy. Was there anything else, Knight? Hold on a sec while I go check my hair. God, night, make it fast. Let me see that file again. <laughs> Just want to check this machine here. Gabriel has a photocopy of the official police file containing the partial patterns from the voodoo murder. Would you just get in here? Hurry up, would you? Okay, ready. Thanks, hon. Let me know when you got it developed. Uh, <laughs> the photos, that is. Yeah, sure. Can I ask you about some stuff? 
You're the writer. Ask away. What's the status on the Voodoo Murders case? It's going. Can't seem to make any progress, though. Sluggish damn case. It's weird. What's the status on the Voodoo Murders case? You're as filled in as me. Well, I'll be seeing you. Ciao, baby. Hi. Uh-huh. The Dixieland Drugstore is crammed from top to bottom with strange merchandise. Some or all of which seems to be related to the practice of voodoo. In this case are super concentrated fixing oils and packages of pins. It's a mannequin wearing a crocodile mask. The glass jars contain a number of things Gabriel can't identify. And wouldn't want to. Root bags, curio boxes, and magic candles, sold as curios only. We cannot guarantee results. The signs say, Special Saint Jean Eve, Lanyape, Free Bottle of Lover Come Back to Me Oil, or Master Gambling Oil, with every purchase over $50. Lanyape. My French is lousy, but everyone in New Orleans knows what that means. A little something extra. The proprietor doesn't look especially friendly. His business probably doesn't depend on walk-ins. A variety of cloth dolls are arranged above the shelves, each impaled with a single silver pin. Hi there. Is this your store? This is a Dixieland drug store and I own it, me. Name's Walker, Willie Walker. Mind if I ask you a few questions? Ask what you want, I'll answer what I want. Can you tell me what you know about voodoo? This is a novelty shop, monsieur. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Cabri Sancour. What did you say? Nothing, nothing. Those killings have nothing to do with my shop, monsieur. What can you tell me about New Orleans? I've lived here all my life, me. Do you know anything about snakes? What kind of snakes? Um, the kind they use in voodoo? Pythons and boas. So I've heard. Really? Do you have one? Are you crazy? What would I want with a python? What's the significance of St. John's Eve? It's the biggest night of the year in voodoo. What goes on exactly? Oh, uh, I couldn't say. What did you mean when you said Cabri sans corps? I didn't say that. You did. I heard you say it. You heard wrong, monsieur. I said no such thing. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? Man, I don't even know what language that is. 
Tell me about yourself. My name's Willie Walker. I own the place. San Luis Cemetery Number One is one of the most historic and beautiful places in the French Quarter. An old man tends the cemetery with movements akin to a slow draw. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. What can I do for you? How's business today? About like every day. It's what you call a seller's market. Mind if I pick your brain a minute? Go ahead. These folks ain't in no hurry. What can you tell me about voodoo? They say it was part of an old religion from Africa, brought here by slaves. What can you tell me about voodoo? I don't really care to talk about it. I don't do it none myself. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Ain't it just awful, them finding those bodies with voodoo things around them? I don't think there's any real voodoo going on. Somebody's trying to cover their tracks is all. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I told you all I know about that. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Seems like everybody want to visit New Orleans at least once in their lives. And they love the cemetery tour. I see tourists in here every day of the year. What can you tell me about New Orleans? There's lots of things to see here, but none are as beautiful as the St. Louis Cemetery Number 1. Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? I see snakes around here all the time. Most of them ain't poisonous, of course. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? Why, St. John the Baptist is the patron saint of voodoo. Sometimes we get some weird goings on in that cemetery on that night. More often a few nights before, people taking grave dirt, bones, and mold. That's pretty disgusting. <laughs> yep. Don't know what they do with them, but it can't be pretty. What else can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I told you all I know about that. Do you have any idea what Cabri saint Car means? No, no, can't say that I do. Have you ever heard the word Schotten Jaeger. I don't know what you're talking about. Tell me about yourself. My name is Toussaint Gervais. I'm the watchman here at St. Louis Number One. What exactly do you do here? Oh, I keep the place tidy, cause but a big part of my job too is looking out for the grievers, you know. People come to pay their respects, and they need looking out for. Sometimes they so grief-bound, they don't know what they doing. Tell me about yourself. That's about all there is to say. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery Number 1. You know why the dead are buried in tombs and not in the ground, don't you? The water table's too high. Them coffins would float right out of their graves. <laughs> Them dead would go floating right down into the quarter. <laughs> Cause if it were Mardi Gras, nobody'd even notice. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery Number One. It's a historical place. People buried in here from the Civil War and back further too. 
Take a look around, you'll see. Tell me something about St. Louis Cemetery number one. Just look around, just look around. You get the feel of the place. This is the tomb of Marie Laveau, voodoo queen of New Orleans. Odd looking marks adorn the Laveau tomb wall. The marks are reddish in color and reminds Gabriel of crosses. They look like they've been here a few days at least. I want a copy of these strange marks. Near the Laveau tomb is a piece of red brick. Undoubtedly a cast off from spiritual graffiti writers. Gabriel doesn't want to disturb that part of the cemetery. Vases seem to be a favorite decoration for the dead. The old man is apparently doing some cleanup work. A stone angel stands silently before a tomb. A high iron fence with sharp spikes surrounds the cemetery. At least the cherubs are an aesthetic way of asking for donations. The chancel of St. Louis Cathedral consists of a raised dais, an altar, two pedestals, and a choir area. Flags of the world are displayed from the upper story. A promotion of the universal harmony, no doubt. That door must lead to the priest's side of the confessionals. There's an inconspicuous door near the chancel. It's a picture of Christ. A padded red bench provides seating. Appropriately sacred books are laid out on the table. A freshly starched black priest's shirt stands out against the white robes in the closet. I can't resist black. Gabriel cannot see himself wearing a long robe. The closet shelves are stacked with the odds and ends of a saintly life. In other words, nothing Gabriel is familiar with. There's a box of white priest's collars in the closet. Well, you never know when a priest's collar will come in handy. Lucy, a hall. Oh boy, party time.
Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you know anything about snakes? Doing a family tree, Gabriel? Very funny. I mean real snakes. You know, scaly, cold-blooded. I would have thought you'd find them empathetic. Mm-hmm. I know very little about reptiles of any kind and prefer to keep it that way. I think there's a book on snakes around here somewhere, though. Okay, thanks. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve? Eh, never heard of it. It must be a local custom. New Orleans love any excuse to celebrate. Do you know what Cabri Saint Gore means? Hmm. No. Sounds French, though. Have you ever heard of a Schattenjäger? No. Is that a voodoo word? I don't think so. It's German. Hmm. No, but it has a nice ring, doesn't it? Schottenjäger. Do you have messages for me? Nope. None right now. Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? Could you see what you can find out about a woman named Malia Getty? Hmm. The name Getty sounds familiar. What's your interest in her? Oh, just, you know, stuff about the voodoo murders. If you could get an address... Mm-hmm. They're murders. Right. I'll see what I can find out. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay. Well... Oh, it's about closing time. So it is. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Gabriel. And uh, try not to dream, okay? Good morning. Don't you look swell today? Actually, swollen. Oh. So have some. There's a fresh pot on the table. Seriously, you look like hell. Your hair is sticking straight up like a... Oh. It always does that. Never mind. Ha ha. Did you dream about the fire and the hang guy and that lion thing last night? Leopard, not lion. Did you get anything on Malia Getty? Well, I did get her address, but you're a little out of your league here, big fella. The Gettys own three local hospitals, just to name a few of their assets. They run in very high circles. Did you get an address? I got the address. I suppose this has nothing to do with the fact that Malia Getty is incredibly gorgeous. 
I should have known you wouldn't go for a rich, ugly socialite. And that address is... Hey! Far be it from me to postpone your total humiliation. It's 557 West Ingram. That's the Garden District, a state city. That's all I wanted to know, and yes, my dear, Maliagetti is the most dangerous-looking diversion I've ever seen. Ouch! Oi, men. Times Peter Hughes, dated June 19, 1993. A front page article describes the most recent of the voodoo murders. Gabriel scans it but learns nothing new. The article reiterates that the voodoo aspect of the crimes is fake. Gabriel shivers. It looked real enough to him. Elsewhere, there's an article about the history of Jackson Square called La Plaza d'Arma, under French rule. It was used for executions, firing squads, hanging, even impalement and breaking on the wheel. Yikes. Of course, these days it's mostly a hangout for tourists, street musicians and local artists. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Chances of a dark star rising on this day. Do not trust your instincts. I feel a dark star rising, all right. I'll be back later. See ya! Welcome, my friend. Hello. I am the proprietor, Dr. John. If you have any questions, I will be happy to assist. Great. My name is Knight, and I'll probably take you up on that. The historical voodoo museum is brimming with items authentic and original. A street drama has settled outside the museum. Something about the shape of that knife gives Gabriel the creeps. Reminds me of a book critic for the New York Times. On the table is a small coffin. So small, in fact, that it would only fit an infant. Charming. A striking portrait of a turbaned woman is on the back wall. Gabriel wonders who she might be. A very large, very formidable looking snake is secured in a plexiglass cage. Dr. John is a huge man. If his manner weren't so pleasant, he'd be intimidating. This is quite a place you have here. Thank you, Mr. Knight. I have dedicated myself to the preservation of this unique culture. It is gratifying to see others reap the fruits I have sown. So where'd you pick up all this stuff? Oh, here and there. We accept donations of any pertinent items. Could I ask you some questions? That is why I am here. What can you tell me about voodoo? Historical voodoo? Or the voodoo currently practiced in the city?
Tell me about historical voodoo. Very well. I will start at the beginning, Mr. Knight, and will go on from there at your prompting. Sounds good. As you may know, voodoo is a grassroots religion formed by the mixing together of many different African tribal religions and Anglo religions, such as Catholicism or Protestantism. In other words, it is a religion born of the African slave trade, but African slaves were imported not only by the United States, but also into the West Indies where the French and Spanish ran plantation islands. Prior to 1803, the New Orleans area was owned by France. The French Creole in those days owned many African slaves. But the Creole did not permit their slaves to gather giving no chance for voodoo to breed here natively. The Creole also knew enough about the corrupted pagan practices of the West Indies slaves to ban the importing of slaves from that region. So, how did voodoo come to New Orleans? After the Louisiana Purchase, American legislators relaxed regulations. Slaves were permitted to gather the Americans also removed the ban on West Indies slaves. Around the same time, a slave revolt occurred in Santo Domingo, what is now Haiti. Between the lifting of the ban and the Haitian revolt, West Indies slaves began pouring into New Orleans. Some of them were free people of color, freed or escaped slaves. Some came with their white owners who were fleeing from the revolt. What happened when the West Indies slaves got here? They brought voodoo with them. The native slaves were more than enthusiastic about embracing it. It gave them power, Mr. Knight, if only in the form of a communal bond. Among the first meeting places were the Bayou St. John and the shore of Lake Pontchartrain. The early Voodoos were heavy snake worshippers, worshipping the one they called the Great Zombie. Tell me more about historical Voodoo. By 1817, the Voodoo activities were beginning to cause fear among the white slave owners. An ordinance was passed to forbid slave gatherings except in designated public areas at designated times. The time was Sunday afternoons and the place, Congo Square. The slaves and free people of color gathered to dance simulations of their voodoo dances right in sight of Creole society. Of course, they also continued to meet in private for the real thing. Tell me more about historical voodoo. There were a variety of kings and queens at first, voodoo priests and priestesses. But from about 1830, a single power emerged. This was a voodoo queen named Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau ruled voodoo in New Orleans for many years. Tell me more about historical voodoo. I've given you as much detail as I can, Mr. Knight. Look around the museum if you desire more information. Tell me about current voodoo. Many people think of voodoo in terms of magic spells or grigri. That kind of practice is actually called hoodoo and is only a part of true voodoo. Voodoo, the religion, has a strong following in New Orleans. In fact, it is growing quite rapidly. There are several voodoo churches or temples in the city and others all across the United States. African Americans see it as a tradition all their own. Whites, and there are many in their religion, are attracted to it because they think it is exotic. I, personally, am more interested in the history of voodoo. Some of the new movements are copying Haitian or even African voodoo, but it is the voodoo of New Orleans that I find so intriguing. 
Tell me more about current voodoo. There are many voodoo ends in New Orleans. They often do business selling grigri, telling fortunes, providing luck, and occasionally misfortune. Perhaps you would like to meet a voodoo end. We refer those who seek a deeper experience with voodoo to a local practitioner, Magentia Moonbeam. Sure, I'd love to meet her. She lives on the corner of Orleans and Dauphine. I will call her and tell her you might stop by. Great, thanks. Tell me more about current voodoo. You have tapped my resources. My expertise is really historical. Perhaps Ms. Moonbeam can be of further help. Is there anything else I should know about voodoo? Not if your interest is primarily in voodoo. Hoodoo is of interest to those who study rural folk traditions, but it will not aid you in understanding true voodoo. What do you know about the voodoo murders? The killings in the newspaper? I know that they have nothing to do with true voodoo in New Orleans. What makes you think the voodoo murders aren't being done by local practitioners? Voodoo is a popular boogeyman, Mr. Knight, especially in New Orleans. Anyone can pretend to use it, just as anyone can pretend to be a black belt in karate, and for the same reason, to intimidate. I know voodoo in this city, Mr. Knight, and believe me, it is not about killing. Even the police have stated that the killings have nothing to do with local voodoo. So you know nothing about the voodoo murders case? I neither know nor care to know, Mr. Knight. My only possible interest is in how it might affect the public's attitude towards the museum. So far, it has not been an issue. No one has even had the bad taste to bring it up. Until you, that is. What do you think of New Orleans? It is the only city in the United States as far as I am concerned. Do you know anything about snakes? Ah, you have perhaps noticed the museum's snake, Mr. Knight. They are beautiful creatures, do you not agree? And the tourists seem to associate them with voodoo. Is the snake yours? Do you use it in your practice of voodoo? I admire the spirit of this snake, Mr. Knight. But snakes like the museums can be quite dangerous to handle. You didn't really answer my question. I think I did, Mr. Knight. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? It is one of the important ceremonial nights in Voodoo. What else can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I am afraid I do not know the origins of St. John's Eve. I only know that it was a night of ritual long before Voodoo came to New Orleans. Do you have any idea what Cabri saint gar means? I fear my French is not all it should be, Mr. Knight. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. There were actually two Marie Laveaux, mother and daughter. Most people thought they were the same woman. Her continued youth added to the mystique. The original, the mother, was also known as Widow Paris. It was she that began the empire. When the Widow Paris began to practice, there were many voodooans in the city. By 1830, she was voodoo queen of all New Orleans. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. The widow Paris was a hairdresser for rich Creole ladies. She also paid household servants to spy for her. 
Between the two, she knew everything about everyone who mattered in New Orleans. She was not above using her information to appear psychic, to intimidate, or even to blackmail. You sound as though you admire her. For a black woman in the mid-1800s to gain power is an incredible thing, Mr. Knight, however she achieved it. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. She kept a pet snake, danced with it too. She held traditional voodoo ceremonies out by the lake. She took herself seriously, very seriously. But she was not above selling tickets for her events to curiosity seekers. She was not above using voodoo any way she could to make money, that is for certain. But if she had been in another line of work, in another age, that would have been interpreted as entrepreneurial genius rather than a sign of fraudulence. Hey, you don't need to convince me. I admire anyone that can actually make a living. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. It was Marie Laveau who defined the voodoo that is truly and uniquely the voodoo of New Orleans. She invented hundreds, if not thousands, of spells, potions, charms, and incantations. These form the basis of the modern practice, not to mention the folk tradition of hoodoo. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. Her daughter, Marie Glapion, took over when the widow Paris got old. Most people thought it was the same Marie Laveau. Both Maries encouraged that point of view. The widow Paris died in 1881. Marie Glapion had been reigning a long time by then. After the death of the widow Paris, other voodoo queens surfaced, and by 1890, the cult was fragmented again. Marie Glapion just sort of faded away. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. The Laveau tomb, where one or both of the Maries are believed to be buried, is in St. Louis Cemetery No. 1. It is a popular shrine for practitioners and tourists alike. I myself take tours through the cemetery on a regular basis. Really? Do you have any running this way? No. But the cemetery is open to the general public as well. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? No. I have not. Tell me about yourself. Me? Yes, if you don't mind. What is it you wish to learn? Why did you open a voodoo museum? The subject has fascinated me all my life, and I wanted to help preserve the cultural heritage it represents. What kind of background in voodoo do you have? Let us say that I cut my teeth on it, Mr. Knight. It is in my blood. Do you do anything besides run the museum? No. The museum does not make me a rich man, but my material needs are simple. I prefer to focus on my one true interest in life. What are your own religious beliefs? My beliefs are too personal and too complex to discuss with a layman, Mr. Knight. Just tell me anything. I am originally from the West Indies myself, you know. Really? What brought you to New Orleans? I was drawn here for personal reasons. Just tell me anything. I am a vegetarian. Really? I can't imagine living without meat. That must be the hunter in you, Mr. Knight. Just tell me anything. 
I do not care for small talk, Mr. Knight. Actually, I can't think of a thing. Then, let us discuss something else. Goodbye, Dr. John. Walk carefully out there, Mr. Knight. I'm sorry to bother you. Yeah? What can I do for you? Mind if I pick your brain a minute? Go ahead. These folks ain't in no hurry. What else can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I told you all I know about that. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Sure, sure. She was the voodoo queen of New Orleans. A powerful voodooine and a powerful sorceress. Believers still come to her tomb, you know. They write secret marks on the walls, leave an offering and things. Then there's the tourists. They come out of curiosity. As a matter of fact, that big Dr. John fella from the voodoo museum, he's here at least once today. But Marie Laveau's tomb ain't the only one the believers visit and make markings and leave offerings at. What else can you tell me about Marie Laveau? Her tomb's on all our tours. Even the Baptists come round here to gawk. Course, you may not know this, but some of the real serious voodoo types argue that she ain't in this one at all, but down in an unmarked tomb in number three. It's all the same to me, I say. Save me a lot of cleanup work if she weren't here, if you ask me. What else can you tell me about Marie Laveau? Boy, go out and buy a book if you really want to know. I ain't too sure my facts these days know how. You said there were other marked tombs? <laughs> yep. I seen bull hearts left on tombs and a nest of vulture feathers, plates of peas and corn green. Animal parts, human parts even, it looked like. Male parts, if you get my meaning. And this at one of the great family crypts, mind you. Odd how them types just pick a spot and stick to it. What other tombs get marked? Can you show me? No, 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 I ain't one for naming names. I don't like to encourage that kind of thing. It's distressing to the family, and rightly so. Don't know how that sort of thing gets started. Why folks come to start leaving stuff at that one spot. But it happens all the same. Welcome, Seeker. You must be the one Dr. John called me about. I guess so. My name is... Wait. Gabriel Knight? <laughs> You're too quick for me. Actually, Dr. John told me. You have come to the right place, Mr. Knight. Tell me how I can help. The mask is made of carved wood and looks African. The moonbeam residence looks like a cross between a voodoo temple and a Victorian fortune teller's parlor by way of Hate Street. A large sluggish snake rests on the floor of the fancy birdcage. Apparently, Magenta is not a fastidious housekeeper. A shed skin shares the cage with its original owner. A 
a large crystal ball is prominently displayed. Magenta moonbeam is wrapped in gauze and silks. She looks vaguely mysterious and mysteriously vague. Dr. John tells me you're a voodoo practitioner of some kind. Yes, I am a voodoo yen, a voodoo priestess. Could I ask you a few questions? Of course, seeker. What can you tell me about voodoo? My practice is mainly selling charms and potions with magic power, such as grigri and voodoo oils. You know, everything from unrequited love to wandering spouses to winning a lawsuit. But my spells and charms are powerful, and they work. What can you tell me about voodoo? Much of a voodoo yen's work is protecting her clients from the spell of others. I make special protective grigri to be worn in secret. They keep evil spells from working against my clients. What can you tell me about voodoo? The recipes for voodoo charms have been handed down from master to apprentice for centuries. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Why, that has nothing to do with me and my clientele. But I can tell you that you should stay as far from it as possible. There is badness there, very bad. So you don't think the voodoo aspects of the case are fake? Fake? Let me tell you about fake. If I get information through the grapevine and make use of it, is that fake? No, that is part of a voodoo yen's power. If people don't believe, there is not much I can do. But if they do believe, that is a part of my power too. But there are things, monsieur, Things not even a little bit fake, I can tell you. Believe it or not, but stay away from it. What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans is the center of voodoo practice in the United States. What can you tell me about New Orleans? It is a fascinating city with many dark secrets. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve? It is the greatest night of the voodoo year. There is always a traditional conclave on St. John's Eve. Most of our voodoo churches these days hold functions in the church hall. But in the old days, they had ceremonies out in the wild, and they wore animal masks and had a huge bonfire and dancing. I used to go when I was an apprentice. Sometimes in the swamp, you know, Bayou St. John. Sometimes at the lake, Lake Pontchartrain. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? Special ceremonies are performed and the lower come to ride the faithful. Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? You mean like my beloved Grimwald? She's a python, you know. Quite deadly in the wrong hands. I was trained by one of the great voodoo queens to learn how to hypnotize and handle snakes. Tell me more about snakes. Oh, I wouldn't want to give away my trade secrets. Do you have any idea Cabri saint Gaur means? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I don't. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Oh, yes. She was the first of the great voodoo queens. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? She ruled voodoo in New Orleans for a hundred years, they say. Tell me about the animal masks. 
I saw them used once or twice when I was younger, but you don't see them much anymore. They are too close. Too close to what? Just bad karma. Have you ever heard the word Schottenjäger? I don't know anything about that. Give me an example of a gri gri. All right. Here's an old one. Take a lodestone and some brimstone to a crossroads at midnight. Light the brimstone with a match, and a spirit will come and give you advice in gambling. Give me an example of a gri gri. Here's an old hoodoo, Dr. Gri Gri. Place a dime under your client's tongue. And if the client is under a spell of any kind, the dime will turn black. Tell me about yourself. Yes? What would you like to hear? How'd you get into this business? I trained in the voodoo arts for many years with the great Queen Tabitha. Really? Who's she? You have never heard of her? For shame! I can see you know little of the world of magic. I'm beginning to get that impression, yes. What kind of people come to see you? Seekers after the truth, such as yourself. Do you do anything else? I am a voodoo yen, and that is plenty. It takes much spiritual effort. How many voodoo yens are there? No one knows exactly. Many practice in secret. There are probably hundreds. But of course the level and the power of the voodoo yens differ greatly, depending on their training and natural gifts. Tell me anything at all. I haven't always lived in New Orleans. I came here from Kansas as a young woman. Tell me anything at all. I began studying voodoo more than 20 years ago. I am well versed in the magic law. Tell me anything at all. Many non-believers come to me. They are usually believers when they leave. I can't think of anything. Very well. Uh, about Grimwald. What about her? Where'd you get Grimwald? She belonged to a traveling reptile show. She was being terribly mistreated, so I offered to buy her. She's named after a spirit guide I had once. The spirit Grimwald was a very powerful female snake priestess in Egyptian times. Grimwald doesn't sound Egyptian. I only know what the spirits tell me. Monsieur, I am sure they know better than we. How'd you learn to handle Grimwald? I told you, a great voodoo queen taught me. She learned from Marie Laveau herself. Ah, oh, fascinating. Would you consider giving me one of Grimwald's scales? No, I couldn't do that. You might do some Grigri of your own, no? One must be very careful with such things. Hair clippings, nail parings, and snake scale. How about showing me how you handle Grimwald? Really? You would like to see me dance, perhaps? That would be swell. I won't make you wait, Monsieur Knight. No matter what you see, do not be frightened. I'll give it my best shot. Gibo grabs the shed snake skin while Magenta is otherwise occupied.
They are truly inspiring, isn't it? That's certainly one word for it. This is the last page of inventory. Gabriel magnifies the shed skin from Magentia Moonbeam's snake. The snake scales are hued brown. They don't match the scale from Lake Pontchartrain. Does this mean anything to you? Mm -hmm. These are magic symbols. Deep magic. Really? Have you seen them before? No. Then how do you know they're magic symbols? Seeker, my eyes are unveiled to see truly that which is in front of me. Uh-huh. Thanks. Tons. Do these symbols mean anything to you? Ah, oh, the voodoo code. It is very secret, yes. I studied it with my mentor, the great Queen Tabitha. Really? Great. Can you tell me what it says? Hmm. Let's see. Well, some of it is nonsense, I'm afraid. Whoever wrote this wasn't very good. That's all right. Just tell me what it says. It starts with a D and a J, and then... Okay, this part makes sense. It says, Conclave tonight, bring... Oh, then there's more nonsense. F-W-E-T-K-A-S-H. Well, that last bit might mean cash. Fresh cash? It doesn't make much sense. That's okay, thanks. DJ Conclave, K-A-S-H. It's a star. I'm happy I could help. Could I ask you a few more questions? Certainly. Uh, about Grimwald. What about her? Tell me anything at all. Well, you have to be careful when handling a snake. They're more delicate than they look. I'll bet. Tell me anything at all. Many people are afraid of snakes. Isn't that silly? Totally. Nothing. Never mind. All right. Well, I guess I'll be gone now. The only vice is the absence of love. I've heard that. By now. The electrician has left his tools behind. He must plan on returning. There's a temperature gauge on the wall near Mosley's office. The security cage has been removed by the electrician. Detective Mosley, hard at work, I see. 
Night, I had a feeling you'd show up. Whew, it's hot in here. Dang, the air conditioning must be on the blink. Are you hot? Man, I'm hot. Mosley's coat is on the chair. His badge is in the front coat pocket. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Is she that red-headed chick that works at Freddy? Uh, no. Then I don't know her. Do you know anything about animal masks? Animal masks? You mean like those Halloween masks they sometimes use in robberies? I don't think so. More like real animals. Never ran across anything like that. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? That's coming up, isn't it? We get some occasional weirdness in the quarter, but nothing much. Used to have a lot of strange things happen, though, or so I hear. How about getting me some coffee? What am I, your slave? Hey, I'm working my butt off here. Yeah, yeah, fine. Some people are never satisfied. I think I'll just borrow this badge. Hey, what are you doing with my coat? Nothing. I thought I saw something crawling on it. <laughs> just drink this. Thanks. Tons. I mean it. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. Have you ever called the hair club for men? I'd rather have no hair than your hair, Knight. I'm gonna hit the road. Have a good one. The Garden District is famous for its elaborate old plantation homes and mansions. This particular mansion is impeccably groomed. Potted roses mark the entrance to the house. It's a brass door knocker. May I help you? I have a fine selection of magazine subscriptions for sale. We do not welcome solicitors. May I help you? Encyclopedias? Go away. May I help you? Are you tired of polishing silver day in and day out? We don't have silver. All our utensils are solid gold. Just as I thought. A good day, sir.
May I help you? Please let me in. No. Go away before I call the police. May I help you? I'd like to see Malia Getty, please. I'm sorry, but unless you have an appointment or official business, I cannot announce you. I do have official business. Really? Please tell me the nature of your business. My name is Detective Mosley. I'm here on police business. Really? How interesting. Wait here. I'll inform Miss Giddy. Miss Giddy will see you right this way. Miss Getty will be down shortly. Thank you. What can I do for you, Detective? Undoubtedly proved that there is a God. Mmm, romantic. I like firelight, Detective. Beautiful women. They must be relatives. They are. Hybrid classic. Homer. Virgil. Eh? Maybe Malia wouldn't be impressed by a signed copy of one of Gabriel's novels. This is quite a place. Thank you. It's been in the family a long time. Mind if I ask you a few questions, Miss Giddy? I assume that's what you're here for, Detective. What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? Why would you want to know about that, Detective? It's rather silly, isn't it? There's nothing silly about the voodoo murders. But that voodoo is faked. That's what I've read in the papers. That's what the papers say, all right. But you're not convinced? No, frankly, I'm not. The police department isn't known for its imagination. Oh. Well, I can see that your imagination is considerable. What do you know about the voodoo murders? The murders? Only what I read in the papers. And what do you read in the papers? I'm sure you know much more about it than I, Detective. Tell me about your life in New Orleans. The Getty family came to New Orleans in 1800. We worked very hard to get where we are. On the other hand, we've done a lot for this community. I can believe that. You're doing a lot for me right now. Tell me more about New Orleans. I'm afraid I don't get out into New Orleans society much. Because of the Getty money, we have slots in the best country clubs and on the best Mardi Gras courts. But I must admit, I hate it. I avoid actually making an appearance unless it becomes absolutely necessary. I know about those courts. They're very exclusive. Yes, especially when it comes to people of my race. That's why we don't turn down the appointments. It's a rare opportunity to rub their noses in it. But that's not where I spend my time. I have more important things to do with my life. That's admirable. Many women would love the chance to get caught up in that kind of life. I'm not any kind of woman you might be familiar with. Yes, I can see that. Do you know anything about snakes? I'm afraid I quite abhor them. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I believe it's some sort of local holiday, but I don't know much about it. Do you have any idea 
what cabri sans gar means? No, I don't. What does it mean, detective? That's confidential information, ma'am. Do you know anything about Marie Leveau? I have heard of her, of course, but that's about it. Do you know anything about animal masks? Animal masks? I don't know what you mean. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? No, I'm afraid I can't help you with that, detective. Tell me about yourself. I suppose I don't really have a choice. What do you want to know, detective? What kind of things interest you? I don't have a lot of free time, but I do appreciate the arts. Opera, symphony, ballet, fine art. If you look around, you'll see that we collect African art, for example. Yes, it's very beautiful. It is, detective. It means a great deal to me. Do you have a career? A career? Being the head of the Getty family is a 24-hour-a-day job. We have many holdings and many responsibilities, financial and otherwise. The management of our business affairs and properties leaves me with time for little else. Poor little rich girl? Believe it or not, detective, wealth does have its price. Tell me about your family. The Gettys? We're a very private family. How many people are there in your family? Well, my mother just passed away. I am sorry. So am I. She was a magnificent woman. We were very close. I was an only child. And your father? I never knew him. It's hard to believe that any man would leave a woman like you. Or like your mother must have been. He did not leave, detective. But that's really none of your concern. I'm sorry. Go on. There are, of course, other Gettys in the city. I have a large, extended family. I see. Do you have a husband? A boyfriend? I'm very independent, detective. The women in my family have always preferred it that way. So, you've never been married? No, and I never will be. What about children? Yes, that is likely. Someday. I'd like to hear just about anything. I do a lot of charity work around the city, primarily in the prison and reform system. I'm not a professional sociologist, but it does interest me. I'd like to hear just about anything. I have a business degree from Vanderbilt. I wanted to study psychology, but my family's interests came first. Oh? Why not something like law, then? Surely that would have been an asset to the family. Law? Please, I do have some morals, detective. I'd like to hear just about anything. For the record, I'm 28, detective. I wouldn't know where to begin. As you wish, detective. Can you tell me anything about what happened out at the lake? I wish I could, but I've never seen or heard anything unusual at the lake, and I do spend quite a bit of time out there. Can you tell me anything about what happened out at the lake? I wish I could. Excuse me, but your eyes are really distracting. I don't think I've ever seen a color quite like that brownish gold. It's so deep and rich. Man, if I could bottle that, I'd make a fortune. Thank you, detective. That's an interesting observation, though probably not relevant to your case. A good detective never knows what might be relevant, Miss Getty. Then you must be truly exceptional at your job. I think this has gone on long enough. You're not really a detective, are you? Who, me? Well, I am on this case, Miss Getty. I saw you at the lake yesterday. I thought you must be with the police since you were there, but... You don't act like a police officer. Besides, I'm rather certain that the other man said his name was Mosley. All right, you caught me. I'm not with the police. My name is Gabriel Knight. 
I'm a writer working with Detective Mosley on a book. Well, Mr. Knight, now that we've established who you are, perhaps you can tell me the real reason you're here. Well, I am researching the book, and I thought you might have seen or heard something at the lake. I don't like liars, Mr. Knight. Okay, okay, you're right. I, I really just wanted to see you again. You can be mad at me if you want, but I swear I've never done anything like this before. Mr. Knight, you've lied about your identity and wasted my time with meaningless questions. If it weren't vaguely flattering, I'd really be angry. You're lucky I don't call the real police. I think you should go, Mr. Knight. Malia, wait. If you just give me a chance. I've wasted enough time. I'll have Robert show you out. Robert? Show Mr. Knight out, please. I most certainly will. Thank you very much. I had a lovely time. Ah, shit. People seem to be enjoying the park, despite the lack of sunshine. A lone drummer beats out a haunting rhythm on a large African drum. The juggler looks like a beginner practicing he act. And artists is taking advantage of the fine weather. Nice drawing of the cathedral. Thanks. It's really precise. Well, I'm an architectural student, actually. It's good practice. Those drawing tools are amazing. Yeah, they're great for laying lines, angles, circles, anything geometric. It's pretty meticulous, but I prefer it to freehand. Can you draw anything with those tools? They're great for ordered, complex forms and patterns, but they won't help me do Monet. Do you mind if I watch you? Be my guest. A small boy is top dancing enthusiastically for a lucky dog vendor. The vendor ignores him. The lucky dog vendor has his nose buried in a paperback novel. Gabriel notice that it is not. Big surprise. One of his. You dance pretty well for a kid. Give me some money, Dan. I don't have any. Don't block the view, mister. Could I get a lucky dog, please? Not now, I'm busy. An unambitious person? In the 90s? Ah, amazing. Hello, are you selling lucky dogs or not? The vendor ignores Gabriel entirely.
I have this gift certificate. I'm busy. It's good for 20 bucks at St. George's Books, finest bookstore in New Orleans. Really? I'll have to check it out sometime. You could take this gift certificate with you, if you'll give me a lucky dog. Lucky dog for a $20 gift certificate? Well, sure. Here you go. The lucky dog is plump and juicy. You wouldn't like a lucky dog by any chance. Would I? Thanks, mister. If you got any special requests, let me know. You mentioned something about special requests? You got one? Can you do the Nutcracker Suite in D minor? Say what? Oh, never mind. How about when the Saints go marching in? Sure. Hey guys, Saints! You got it, kid. That was great, thanks. No problem, mister. Hey, come back here. Hey! The artist is off chasing his errant drawing. Unbelievable. Rotten luck. An artist is taking advantage of the fine weather. How's it going? Well, life sucks. I just lost two days worth of work. What you working on now? Just starting another drawing of the cathedral. Is her drawing caught up against the hedges? Gabriel can't reach the drawing from where he is. You mentioned something about special requests. You got one? Can you fit through the bars around the statue? Can I? Just watch me. Good. There's something in there I can't quite reach. Come on. 
Can you reach that piece of paper? Sure thing. Here you go. Yep. See ya. It's a technical drawing of Saint Louis Cathedral. This belongs to you, doesn't it? My drawing? How'd you get it? Oh, it was a bit of a squeeze, but I hate to see you lose your work. I lost my only copy of a manuscript once. Well, you saved my butt. Let me know if I can ever do the same for you, huh? Say, do you think there's anything you can do with these patterns? What do you need? Is there any way you can reconstruct the whole pattern from these partials? Hmm. The pattern is probably circular, and there's some repetition in the elements. What is this from, anyway? You'd never believe me. Okie dokie. Well, there's... Hmm. I think there's an area missing. If you could get me any more of these... I'll see what I can do. I have another one of those patterns. Really? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, this is great. I think there's enough overlap now. I'll give it my best shot. I'll show you what I come up with tomorrow. Great. I appreciate it. Is there anything else you need to do that reconstruction? I think I have enough now, thanks. Hello. Mm-hmm. Bonjour, Monsieur Walker. Oh, bienvenue, Madame Carzano. Como ça va? How you be feeling today? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Walker, I'm certain someone's buried a sleep knot bag somewhere near my steps. I haven't slept a wink in weeks. Oh, don't that beat all? Well, you're gonna need some easy night candles then. Do you think that would help? I do hope you're right. I said three rosaries this morning for our lady's intervention. Rosaries are good, sure enough. But you burn those candles too and you're gonna whip any old no sleep gree gree, I tell you for sure. Very well, Mr. Walker. Put them on my account and send them round to my house. Oh, and there's another thing. I didn't catch her at it, but I know Mrs. Lefebvre put stomachache powder in my tea at the last meeting of the Creole Grand Dames. Oh, I've been in misery. You put nine pinheads up in a little box, add a pinch of graveyard dust, and put it under her front porch step. That'll turn the trick back on Mrs. Lefevre, and she'll be the one with the bellyache. I have the pins and the dust. Right here if you want them. If the Blessed Virgin will grant me her protection, I'll be safe from these practitioners of evil. We, oui, madame. Though it don't hurt to be proactive none either. Now does it? Naturellement, monsieur. Merci beaucoup. Mais non, madame, it is nothing. Au revoir. Au revoir, Monsieur Walker.
The mask appears to be made from a real crocodile head. The poster reads, Power will be yours when you use Papa Legba's power drawing incense and master power oil. Buy some today. Small bags made of felt and flannel hang from the ceiling. Those are gree gree. They're full of magic. No guarantees though, you know. Can I ask you just a few more questions? Whatever, man. Do you know anything about snakes? I've already told you everything I know. Have you ever heard of Marie Laveau? Marie? She's somebody from the old days. One of those folk tales. Oh, the tourists eat it up, non. Do you know anything about animal masks? Like the ones in the voodoo rituals they do for the tourists? Right. I used to sell a few as souvenirs. The only one left is Willie Jr. over there. The old crocodile. Well, he's sort of a mascot now, him. Can you tell me anything else about how animal masks are used? They're curiosities, no? This is a curio shop. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? Man, I don't even know what language that is. That customer of yours, the little old lady. Customer? The woman I saw in here, Madame Cazonu, you called her. I don't talk about my customers to men who come in off the street. About Willie Jr., would you be willing to let him go? Hmm, maybe. For a hundred dollars. A hundred bucks? You gotta be kidding. Me and Willie Jr. are very close, Norm. I could park with him for less. Hey, Grace. Here I am. Oh, joy. Seen any good movies? I saw a great documentary last night on pyramid excavations. You mean small, dark places that haven't been touched in centuries? Sounds right up your alley. Well, it did help me gain a better understanding of your mind. Did I ever tell you that you're actually quite attractive? Be still, my heart. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Wasn't she a big voodoo queen before the Civil War? That's right. Well, you just heard everything I know about her. Do you know anything about animal masks? Uh, I I'd really rather not hear about your sex life, Knight. Do you have messages for me? Nope. None right now. Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? I need you to look up a Madame Cazonu. Madame Cazonu? Is she related to the murders the same way your friend, Malia Getty, was? Christ, Gazanu is at least 70. As if that makes a difference to you. Okay, I'll see what I can find. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay.
It's time to close shop. So it is. Have a nice night. You too. See you tomorrow. I'm so glad you could join us today. I've got messages when you want them. Mmm. -hmm. I also checked out Kazanu. There are multiple listings in the white pages. I got the page, but you'll have to figure out the right one. Great, thanks. Now, are you going to tell me what happened yesterday with Malia Getty, or <laughs> is it just too embarrassing? Mm. Don't tell me you actually got to see her. Are the star at tonight. Gabriel, you don't seriously think she's interested. She can have any man in the city. You know, men with bank accounts. You underestimate the Knight family's tragic poet samurai appeal. When Daddy married Mom, she was the hottest catch in town. Hmm. I always suspected there was something fishy in your family tree. But seriously, I think you should be careful. Wow, Grace. I'm serious. I don't know why, but I have a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach about this. It's called jealousy, my dear. And you're right. You should be jealous of Malia Getty, as should every woman on this planet. I just... Uh, oh, never mind. I'll just fix these books. Your life is in your own slippery little hands. The point is to get it into somebody else's hands. And soon. Times Pickle Hewn, dated June 20, 1993. Gabriel scans over an uninteresting front page. Under the cultural events section, there's a notice about a lecture on African religions. The lecture is at Tulane University. Gabriel's horoscope for the day. An evil eye is upon you. Change course before it's too late. Lighten up. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you have messages for me? Your pal mostly called. He left a message that they're interrogating a suspect this morning, and you might want to be there. Sounds fun. Mm-hmm. I bet. Do you have more messages for me? That man from Germany called again, Wolfgang Ritter. Now he's claiming to be a relative of yours. 
I took down his number. If you change your mind and want to give him a call back, just ask me for it. Can I get that phone number for Wolfgang Ritter? Sure. I'll give it to you when we're done talking. Do you have more messages for me? I've given everything to you. Here's that phone number. Thanks. Wolfgang Ritter's phone number, written in Grace's pretty scrawl. Guten Tag, Sie haben Schloss Ritter erreicht? I'm looking for Wolfgang Ritter. Ja, einen Moment. Ja, ist es Gabriel on the phone? This is Gabriel Knight. Why are you calling me, Mr. Ritter? I have been having premonitions of great danger for you, Gabriel. You must leave New Orleans this very day. What the hell are you talking about? It is hard to explain on the phone. I have had senses, uh, feelings about you. It took me a long time to have you tracked down. I had a sense that Heinz had a grandson, but until these dreams started, I did not know if I should contact you. You say you're related to my grandfather? Yes, Heinz was my brother. There is much about the family that you should know, Gabriel. Come to Schloss Ritter in Rittersberg, West Germany. It is our family home. I will tell you everything when you come. You must come immediately. You are in great danger there. Look, I appreciate the family spirit and all, but frankly I don't know you from Adam, and I'm not going to fly off to Germany, even if I could afford it. Gabriel, please, if you won't listen, at least let me send you something. It is a journal from one of your ancestors. Promise me you will read it. Well, I'm pretty busy. Please, Gabriel, you are the last of our life. I am too old to carry on. You are our last hope. Please, for your family, read the journal. All right, I'll look at it. Good. Now be careful and come to me as soon as you can. Goodbye. Somewhere there's a New Orleans phone book missing one of its C pages. Somewhere. Hello. Hi. Is this the Casanu residence? Yes. What can I do for you? Do you or does anyone in your family patronize the Dixieland drugstore? I'm a busy man. What are you selling? Nothing. Good. Goodbye. Hello, Casano Residence. Hi. I was wondering if you could help me. Yeah? A woman in the Dixieland drugstore dropped her purse today, and the name Casano was inside it. 
Dixieland Drugstore. Never heard of it. Sorry. Hello? Robert? Uh, no, it's not Robert. Then get off the phone! I'm calling from the Dixieland Drugstore. We have an order for you. Castro, be quiet. Who is this? I'm a friend of the owner. I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. Agent Critter's Animal Clinic, this is Melissa. Do you know anything about snakes? Our doctors see just about any type of animals, but we don't get many snakes. Okay, thanks. The Creole Grand Dames will hold their annual Gardenia Festival and tea this coming Tuesday at the Sons of Burgundy Hall. Admission is free. Please hang up and try your call again. This is a recording. Do you have men problems? Someone put a hex on you? Call Sister Crawler for the power of love and Lord Jesus Christ take your big one daily. Cajun Critters Animal Clinic, this is Melissa. Know anything about animal sacrifice? What are you, some kind of sicko? Do you have men problems? Cajun Critters Animal Clinic, this is Melissa. Do you have a Madame Cazonou as a client? Madame Cazonou? Sure, I know her. She's not here right now, though. Really? Hmm. She told me she'd be there. Uh, would you happen to have an address by any chance? Um, uh, yes, but I'm not sure I should give it out. Who are you again? I'm worried about Castro. He's missed three dance lessons. Castro? Her little doggy? Oh, he's so sweet. Well, I guess if you know Castro, it's okay. Uh, her address is 345 Dauphine. Thanks. The Creole Grand Dame will help. So, what's new, Grace? Your use of mathematics, for one thing. These books are unbelievable. What can I say? I refuse to be bound by rules. The strap marks on your bedpost speak otherwise. Grace keeps her art supplies here. I'm out of here. Try not to sell out the store while I'm gone. Have fun. You seem to be quite a reader. Yeah. Did you ever read anything by Gabriel Knight? No.
the booth is a colorful melange. It announces the owner as Madame Lorelei and gives prices for palm reading $20, crystal ball gazing $15, and birth charts $50. Madame Lorelei lounges at the booth, fondling her snake. Madame Lorelei, the fortune teller, is garbed in a belly dancer's outfit and wears a boa around her neck. A real boa. Not a bad idea. Baby, I love the way you move. Madame Lorelei winks knowingly at Gabriel and twitches her hip. Yep, she wants me. Thanks, boys. It's a silken veil. The veil belongs to the fortune teller. It's covered with shiny iridescent sequins. Gabriel examines the veil with a magnifying glass. That sequin looks a little strange. Why, it's a snake scale! Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to remove the snake scale from the veil. Gabriel magnifies the scale from the fortune teller. The iridescent scale is hued olive green. It doesn't seem to match the scale from Lake Pontchartrain. I think this veil belongs to you. Huh, my veil. I'm always losing those things. You have no idea. Well, darling, you're such a sweetie to return a lady's delicate and so handsome as well. Well, I... And since you have such a clear interest in fortune-telling, let me see your hands. They look so strong. Perhaps they will make both our fortunes clear, no? I wish something would. Hmm, strong, yes, and uh, yet so delicate and uh, flexible. <sighs> you don't know the half of it. Oh, good. I see a mysterious woman in your immediate future. Madame Lorelei winks at Gabriel knowingly. She is a dangerous one. Dark and beautiful. Ah, I see the road of your life, Falcon. And very soon. <laughs> the blood drains from Madame Lorelei's face in an instant. Sweat beads on her upper lip. Are you okay? No. <laughs> oh, God. Beware. Beware. What is it about me lately? Madame Lorelei's booth is deserted.
How's it going today? What? Oh, it's only you. Man, I have been jumpy all day. That, that pattern of yours really freaked me out for some reason. There's just something creepy. You finished it? Yeah, and you're welcome to it. Here. Wow, this is great. Uh-huh. Just don't, like, blow up the planet with it or something, okay? I didn't mean to upset you. Oh, forget it. I'm probably just being stupid. Do your thing with it, and good luck. The reconstructed VV was done for Gabriel by a technical artist. It appears that Madame Lorelei has returned. You're back. You know, you really freaked me out running off like that. Yoo-hoo! Anybody home? Stay away from Maria Getty, or you shall pay with your life! is going on I knew you'd miss me, so I came back. The excitement of seeing you is killing me. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Could you do some research for me? Sure, what? I have a pattern I need you to research. How interesting. What is it? It's a reconstruction of the tracings they found around the murder victims. The ones done in flour and blood. Ugh. You shouldn't carry this kind of thing around. Who knows what these symbols mean? Well, wear your evil banishing gloves if you want. But check it out for me, would you? I'll see what I can find out. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay. Tell me about yourself, Grace. What else do you want to know? Just tell me anything at all. I just got my master's in history and classics. My folks wanted me to go on right away for my PhD, but 18 years of school was enough. I needed a break. Nothing, I guess. Never mind. Sit yourself. I've got some things I need to do. See ya. Gabriel, my love, how nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Gran. Make yourself at home, son. Nice weather. Oh, Gabriel, please. It's been just awful. Muggiest summer of my life. 
Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Marie Laveau? Of course! She was that voodoo woman, wasn't she? She preyed on people's fears and superstitions is what I think. There are always those willing to take other people's money for nothing. You stay away from people like that, Gabriel. Yes, Gran. Do you know anything about animal masks? Why, no, dear. Do you mean Mardi Gras masks? Never mind, Gran. Do you know anyone named Wolfgang Ritter? As I said, your granddad's surname was originally Ritter. I never learned much about his family, but from things he said, I always thought he had a brother back in Germany. I don't know if Wolfgang Ritter is related to your granddad or not. You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Oh, you. <laughs> Well, Gran, I better get going. All right, dear. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? Bunch of crazies out there on St. John's Eve, that's what. We're busy all night. Really? What kind of crazies? Ah, uh, your usual howl at the mooners, I guess. They don't look no weirder than them that comes in during Mardi Gras. Never can tell, though. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Marie who? Is she the one that hangs out on Conti and Nash? Uh, no. Never mind. I'm here to see Detective Moslin. He's in his office. Go on back. Tell me about yourself. I hate people who ask stupid questions. You son of... Give me back my badge. Now, Knight! Sure. Thanks for letting me borrow it. Yeah? Well, you borrow it again in your history. <sighs> now, about today. Glad you made it. It'll give you a feel for how I am in action. You know, handling suspects, that sort of thing. I'm sure it'll be invigorating. Uh, who is this guy, anyway? Calls himself Crash. He's been an informant for us before, mostly helping us bust small-time pimps and dealers trying to break into the territory. Well, he's been staying invisible during these murders, but we picked him up this morning at Jackson Square. Pushing coke? He knows something. Call it Detective's Instinct. Detective's Instinct. <laughs> Got it. All right, Crash. I want to hear about these murders. You been present at the so-called voodoo ritual? 
I don't know nothing. I told you. Oh, come on now, you can tell me. Do you know anyone who's been to these rituals? Look. Look, I, I can't say nothing. You gotta let me go, man. Now you relax, no one knows you're here. The men who picked you up were plain clothesmen. Plain clothes? Like you could fool them. <laughs> they know I'm here. They've got ears all over the city. They know everything. Now who are they, Crash? Are they the ones doing the murders? Let me go! If you're so worried about being detained, start talking. Now you tell me what I want to hear, and maybe I can get you in the witness protection program. But you have to earn it. Witness protection? Are you crazy? Don't make me laugh. Jesus, just let me out of here. Now oh, come on, who's behind these murders, Crash? Why are the victims all members of the underworld? By now they know I'm here. I mean, it's, it's different when I'm supposed to come here. Well, I can send a message. Tell him I didn't say nothing. Christ, he's freaking useless. Take him back to detain him, would you, Tony? I tell you, times like this, I'd kill for true serum and damn the civil rights. Can I quote you on that? Huh? Hell no. Damn! We only keep him for 24 hours. Tomorrow morning I might have to let him go. Sorry it wasn't more exciting. Yeah, for the book, I mean. Maybe you can punch it up some. You know, what they call that. Fiction, that's it. It certainly is. I'll see what I can do. I'll let you get back to it. Later, Knight. It looks like the lecture is just starting. Gabriel decides to record the session. Voodoo is the tribal religion of Africa. But the name Voodoo is actually a banner heading under which resides an entire body of distinct tribal belief systems. The word Voodoo may sound familiar to you. What is known in the States as Voodoo is actually an amalgamation of African religious systems, Voodoo and European religions, primarily Catholicism. All of the subcults of African voodoo have certain things in common. The most important is the worship of a pantheon of spirits instead of the single deity that the Christian and Muslim systems have. Some of these spirits are elementals. Some relate to specific tasks or places. Some represent important tribal leaders who have died. This spirit worship is what makes voodoo so easily adaptable. With all those spirits, it's no problem to add a few more. Say, for example, the Virgin Mary. At the height of tribal Africa, warfare was common. One tribe would conquer another, and the loa, important in the conqueror's tribal system, would be adopted readily into the conquered tribe's loa pantheon. In this way, Many of the voodoo cults spread and mingled throughout tribal Africa, enriching the belief system and causing innumerable offshoots. The basis for the voodoo religion seems to be as old as man himself. It has much in common with many early pagan practices, animal totems, sympathetic magic, elemental spirits in the trees, the heavens, the bodies of the sick. Africa is believed by many to be the cradle of the human race. Some of the voodoo loa may be as old as the Garden of Eden itself. We still can't explain some of the real power of these primal religions. And note, I said primal, not primitive. 
There are African Bokors who baffle our scientists with their supernatural powers. Now, let's discuss the elements of Voodoo. Fascinating guy. In Voodoo, the spirits are called the Loa. During a Voodoo ceremony, celebrants are possessed by the Loa. And this is called being ridden. The human worshiper is seen as a horse and the Loa as the divine horseman. A person being ridden by a Loa takes on the characteristics of that spirit and becomes, in effect, merely a vessel for the more powerful entity. Some of the older, original Africa Loa include Dambala, the great serpent god, Ezruli, the mistress of love, Papa Nebo, or Gede, the lord of death, Agwe, the spirit of water, Legba, spirit of the crossroads, and the cruelest and most dangerous, Ogun Badagri, the Lord of Destruction. Oh, I gotta get more sleep at night. A uh, tribe-specific Loa can have as much or more power as the more widely worshipped Loa. For instance, a particular tribe might revere highly the Loa of an ancestor who was a legendary hunter or politician. Voodoo temples are called Hounfors. Their priests, Hungan or Bokors. Their priestesses, Mama Loa. In a Voodoo Hounfor, there's a ritual circle marked by a center pole called a Potomitan. The ritual circle is prepared with a Veve, a pattern of symbols. Each tribe's Veve is slightly different consisting of complex symbols that identify their special law. During ritual conclaves, initiates dance under the supervision of a Vokor and a Mama Loa, or head priestess. The use of totems or animal masks and markings was not uncommon in the original African ceremonies. Now though, all but the oldest sects have abandoned this practice. Ritual objects used during the conclaves include the ritual gourd or asson, the ritual knife or kubasa. That knife gives me the chills. The ritual whip or fwet kash. And the ritual coffin or seke madule. These items are often optional, called for by the Mama Loa for specific magical rituals. The Mama Loa is the most powerful figure in any Voodoo sect. Voodoo is a truly matriarchal system. Even the Bokor knows his power is limited. The Mama Loa is the supreme woman. She, butterflies, fireflies. Firelight. No, that is Gabriel. Mm, what? I can't see. Gabriel, get in. Man, it's too small for me. You must get in, Gabriel. It's not mine. Too small. Hide, Gabriel. Hide. No! No! Let me out! <laughs> Young man, the lecture is over. Oh my god! Gabriel scans the bulletin board. Greek night at the Alpha Psi Omega Frat House. It looks like it took place sometime last spring. Gabriel scans the bulletin board. 
there's a notice for a lecture on investigative reporting techniques to be given by octogenarian Pulitzer Prize winner Laura Bo Dorian. Unfortunately, it's weeks away, but at time Gabriel will have to have learned on his own. Gabriel scans the bulletin board. Need a ride to LA the last weekend in August. I wouldn't go there if you paid me. Gabriel scans the bulletin board. Work out of your home and make up to 2000 a week in your spare time. Call 555-6789. I actually called them once. You sell cat food over the phone. Gabriel scans the bulletin board. Ha! We'll do algebra or biology homework for food. Gabriel's in one of the lecture halls at Tulane University. The podium. Partridge is thrown. There's a PA speaker on the wall. There's a door on one side of the stage. Are you a student? No. My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Well, you have walked into my private office, Mr. Knight. I hope you have something worthwhile to do here. If you figure it out, let me know. Dr. Hartridge's office is crowded with masks, carved figures, and strange objects. Exotic fish lend even more color to the cluttered office. Dr. Hartridge's sharp eye and even sharper tongue. When he condescends to look at Gabriel at all, it's with a dismissive glare. Dr. Hartridge's desk is remarkably neat, especially considering the rest of the room. It's an enormous stone head. The squatter grins maliciously at Gabriel. That mask is quite hideous. The carved stone head looks African and very old. It's Hartridge's file cabinet. Dr. Hartridge's office is crowded with masks, carved figures, and strange objects. Your lecture was terrific. Oh, you think so? You were snoring so loud I didn't think you'd heard it. Is there anything you can tell me about the voodoo aspects of this photograph? Hmm, this is serious voodoo and ritual. Nasty stuff. In what way? Let's see. I can't make out much detail from this photograph, except for the corpse, of course. But the wound, the face, and what little I can see of the ritual paraphernalia, mm -hmm. reminds me of certain black voodoo and practices. Very rare. I've never witnessed them myself, you understand. Really? Interesting. Thanks. Can you tell me anything about this pattern? Wow. Interesting. Very interesting. Mind if I copy this? Be my guest. Great. I'll be right back. Here you go. You know, this is a fascinating baby. You must tell me all about its origin. Actually, I was hoping you'd tell me. Can you figure out anything about it from the symbols? Well, some. That's why I wanted a copy. I want to research the design myself. 
Each of the symbols in the Veve represent something, a loa, a place. Where did you get this? Have you heard of the voodoo murders? No, you're kidding. Really? Then the voodoo is authentic. The newspapers are wrong. Boy, are they wrong. You think this Veve is authentic then? Authentic? Mr. Knight, that's like asking if the Mona Lisa is a painting. Tell you what, I'll uh, look into these symbols myself and see what I can learn about the sect that made this. I'll give you a call when I have more information. Uh, you are associated with the police, aren't you? Absolutely. But I'm, uh, undercover. You can contact me at the St. George's Bookshop in the quarter. All right. Now, I'd like to get started on this, if you don't mind. Mind if I pick your brain? Not if it will get you out of my office. What can you tell me about voodoo? You already sat through my lecture on the subject, Mr. Knight. Perhaps next time you could stay awake and learn something. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Hmm, just what I read in the papers until you showed me that baby. I wasn't interested before, but now... Yes, I'd like to figure out where these people come from and what they're up to. They are obviously some very frightening and deadly serious voodoo. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I'm hoping you'll tell me more about it. What can you tell me about New Orleans? I find it interesting to see the occasional fragment of voodoo practices in the everyday culture of New Orleans. What else can you tell me about New Orleans? Uh, the Catholic Church has always dominated in New Orleans, and its imagery, in turn, has dominated New Orleans voodoo. What else can you tell me about New Orleans? If there's more you wish to know, perhaps you should read my books. Do you know anything about snakes? I'm not a zoologist, Mr. Knight, but I know all I care to about reptiles. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? It's June 23rd, the feast day of St. John the Baptist. But June 23rd has been a sacred day since the earliest times. Ancient sun worshippers used to roll a flaming wheel down a hill to celebrate the sun's descent on that day. A burning wheel, huh? What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I'm not in the habit of repeating myself, Mr. Knight. Do you have any idea what Cabri Saint Cœur means? Cabri Saint Cœur. Yes, I do. It's a Haitian term, I believe. It's French, and literally translates as goat without horns. As in a female goat? No, as in a human sacrifice. Sacrifices in voodoo are usually of the animal variety. Chickens, bulls, goats. If the gods demand a goat without horns, it means a human being. What was that translation for Cabri saint Cor again? I'm not in the habit of repeating myself, Mr. Knight. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? While I find the colloquial bastardizations of Voodoo somewhat interesting from a surely intellectual point of view, there's not a lot of relation between people like Laveau and true Voodoo practices. Do you know anything about animal masks? As I said in my lecture, which I assume you actually listened to, is that animal masks, totems, are used extensively in most African Voodoo religions. Can you tell me anything about that veve I showed you? I told you I would research it, Mr. Knight. When I have anything concrete, I'll let you know. 
Tell me what you mean by black voodoo. Well, like any religion, the beliefs can tend toward positive or negative ends. Can be used for good or evil. Christianity, for example, has its doppelganger, Satanism. See, anytime you attempt to set up an icon to explain evil, you invite some warped mind to worship it. The same is true of voodoo. There are those who are drawn by and desire personal power from the darker, bloodier Loa. Can you give me an example of black voodoo? All right. There is a very secret, very dark cult in Haiti called the Cult de Mort, Cult of the Dead. Their primary law is Baba Nabo, Loa of the Cemetery. They practice a particularly disgusting form of necromancy, magic using the dead. They dig up corpses and use their decaying bodies for various spells and curses. Can you give me another example of black voodoo? In tribal Africa there were, and still are, black bokors. Shamans bent towards the dark, who not only practice necromancy, but also human sacrifice. Is there anything else you can tell me about black voodoo? Only that if it's being practiced in this city, None of us are safe. Have you ever heard of a Shutton Jaeger? I'm afraid I can't help you there, Mr. Knight. Tell me about yourself. All right, Mr. Knight. I'm 35, a fully tenured professor at this university as well as a fellow at Cambridge. My doctorate was obtained at Syracuse. Yes, Syracuse, in religious studies. I'm an agnostic, but I find human belief systems fascinating. I specialize in African religions because I grew up there. My father was a Protestant missionary. And I am heterosexual when I practice sex at all, which isn't very often. Any other questions? Uh, no. Fine. Tell me more about human sacrifice. It's uh, very rare. Most voodoo practices do not include human sacrifice as a matter of record, but it is theoretically possible if that's the gods demand. For example, one of the chants I had translated for me from a Haitian ritual went like this. Mistress Azuli, come and aid us. If a cock is demanded, we will give it. If a bull will suffice, behold it. But if a goat without horns is required for sacrifice, Oh, where will we find one? Azuli is the gentlest of Loa, so they call on her for mercy. But I have seen grown and powerful Hungan tremble before a possession by one of the more violent Loa, such as Papa Nebo. Clearly, they are afraid that something of the sort will be ordered, or that the Loa will simply take it for themselves. Tell me more about human sacrifice. I wouldn't dwell on it. Most Voodoo sex probably haven't seen a human sacrifice for several generations. I'll be going. Oh, do keep in touch. An old man tends the cemetery with movements akin to a slow drawl. The right family tomb. Several of Gabriel and Grand's family members 
are laid to rest here. A wrought iron fence surrounds this tomb. I hope that's to keep people out. Several generations of an old New Orleans family rest here in relative peace. Malia. Mr. Knight, what are you doing here? Uh, my family's tomb is here. Mine too. I noticed. Subtle. Well, Mr. Knight, if there's nothing else. Don't go. I need to talk to you. Whatever for. I can't stop thinking about you. I've been in your thoughts too. I can see it in your eyes. Mr. Knight, you don't know anything about me. I'm not in a position to get involved. I've said that a million times myself, but this is different. I think we both know we can't fight it. Oh, I can't believe I'm saying this. I have so many obligations. My family is very traditional. You wouldn't understand. Hey, I love tradition. I've seen Fiddler on the Roof a hundred times. This isn't a musical, Mr. Knight. We live in different worlds. Look, I know you've got more money than God. Do you think I care? Do you think that's why I'm saying this? No, I don't. Why don't you come see my world? I have a little bookshop, St. George's on Bourbon. I know. See, I knew it. You're crazy about me, too. Come by tonight, please. My world isn't so bad. I'm sorry, but there's no place for someone like you in my life. Not now, not ever. Damn it! The imposing tomb is elaborately labeled Gede. An angel draped dramatically over a stone plinth marks the entrance to a large tomb. Two enormous vases flank the front of the Getty tomb. This old tomb has a sword carved into the stone below the name of the deceased. A stone angel leans down to gaze at something unseen. This tomb is smaller than most others in the cemetery. Kind of a pup tent for the dead. Most of the plaster has fallen away over the years to reveal walls of red brick. Lucy, I'm home. Really? I forgot you were gone. If you try to look down my shirt one more time, I'm leaving. Hell, just trying to refresh my memory. I know what you're trying to refresh, and it isn't your memory. Get down. So, what's new, Grace? Your use of mathematics, for one thing. These books are unbelievable. What can I say? I refuse to be bound by rules. The strap marks on your bedpost speak otherwise. Did I ever tell you that you're actually quite attractive? 
Be still, my heart. Had any customers lately? Uh, no, but I'm sure you have. The chair has nothing to say. You know, you really should get out more. But then who'd take care of St. George's? Or me. Exactly. Oh, done anything interesting lately? By your definition? No. I prefer it that way. Hey, kids. Bruno. How nice. Gee, a customer. Of yours? Hardly. How's the flower business? Well, better than the used book business, I see. Rare books. That explains why I so rarely see anyone in here. Are you going to sell me that wonderful painting of yours today? How much would you give me for it, Bruno? Gabriel, don't you dare sell your father's painting. Stay out of this, Grace. Ooh, you're serious? You'll let me have it? Yeah, I'll let you have it, all right. How much for the painting? Hmm, well, I could give you a hundred. That's all I can let go at the moment, you know. My fares are so tied up. Gabriel, a hundred dollars for your father's painting? Grace, let me deal with this. Fine, it's yours. Gabriel! Here, here's the hundred. You better take good care of this, Bruno. This is not just another of your hip art pieces, you know. Really? Well, I fully intend to make the most of its display, though not for your sake, I'm sure. At least in my shop, there'll be a chance of someone actually seeing it. I can't believe I actually got it. Just wait until I show Sid. I don't believe you! It... It's just a painting, Grace. There are things I have to do. See you later. Good luck. Hi. Uh-huh. Can I ask you just a few more questions? Whatever, man. Are you still interested in selling that crocodile mask? Or you show me a hundred dollars and the mask is yours. One hundred dollars in cash. Eh, that's the most money Gabriel had in his pockets in two years. I have a hundred dollars. You still want to sell that crocodile mask? That's a hundred dollars, sure enough. The mask, it's yours, sir. Yeah, you go. Carefully, don't bite you now. Yeah, thanks. Don't you go forgetting your lagniap? A free bottle of master gambling oil. The sign said I could get Lady Luck oil instead. Well, I wasn't thinking a man as young as you would be needing that kind of remedy. But if you're having problems with your... Oh, that's all right. Believe me, I don't need it. I'll just stick with this. Thanks, anyway. 
course, it ain't none of my business if you do need it. I don't need it. Of course you don't. All windows flank the front of the mansion. Like many New Orleans buildings, this one is accented with ornamental wrought iron. The front door is solid hardwood and at least a century old. Yes? Who is it? I have some fine magazine subscriptions for sale. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested. I've got some great pet supplies. Could you, could you cool it, old doggy? Oh, 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 oh. Castro has everything he needs. Don't you, Castro? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Castro. Land shark. You have no Bill Murray. Hi, I'm doing an article on voodoo, and I heard that you... I am a good Catholic young man. Take your evil influence elsewhere. But I just have a few questions. I can feel the evil eye. Go away. Gabriel is carrying a priest's shirt and collar witch. <laughs> surprise, surprise! Do not belong to him. All right, but this is private. The things I do for my art Yes? Who is it? It's Father McLaughlin to see you. Father McLaughlin, you say? Hmm. You must be new in the parish. I'm so pleased to meet you, Father. Do come in. Thank you, my child. Please be seated, Father. Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? Madame's parlor is full of carefully dusted and polished relics of her past. Madame seems to like candles. Gabriel wonders if these two are specialties of Mr. Walker's shop. The painting behind the couch is a Madonna and child. Madame's parlor is full of carefully dusted and polished relics of her past. The tea service has been polished recently. Madame uses it with her Creole sisters, perhaps? There's an old-fashioned jewelry box on the coffee table. Madame Casanu looks fragile and pale under a thick layer of face powder. If Gabriel is not mistaken, she's a slice short of a loaf. Handsome, isn't he? It's so nice of you to invite me in. Ah, but no, mon père. I am always happy to see one of the good fathers. Do you find the weather cheer liking? It's terribly humid. I only go out in the morning and evening. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions, my child? Of course not, mon père. What can you tell me about voodoo? Ah, people think I'm just a foolish old woman. 
But I know the things they do. My family's been in New Orleans since 1750, so I know more than most. Voodoo people are all over this city, in the shops, everywhere. They'll curse you like that, and most people don't even notice. Spit on your bread at the bakery, take strands of your hair at the store when you try on the clothes. You have to be so careful. But I know their ways, so I can protect myself. I know how to use the magic too, and I can counteract their evil spells. Tell me more about voodoo in New Orleans. It's just plain evil. It's dangerous to even discuss it. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Voodoo murders? Ha! They are nothing new to me, father. They happen all the time. I hardly go out anymore. It's too dangerous in the streets. They can get you anywhere, you know. Even here in this room. But I try not to let them know about me. That's the best way. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Shh! They'll hear you. What can you tell me about New Orleans? The only true New Orleanians are of French origin, you know. My family were among the original settlers of New Orleans. They came here from France. The Creole society used to be so gay in New Orleans. Now it barely hangs on by its fingernails. What can you tell me about New Orleans? You know, I can stroll the streets of the French Quarter and see in my mind's eye the way it used to be. It was wonderful in the old days. What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans isn't what it used to be, I can tell you. There's too few of the real people left. Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? They're evil creatures. Did you know that evil people can send them into your dreams? They can. That's why I never sleep. Right, thanks. Do you know anything about snakes? It would be bad luck to talk about that anymore. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve? May we? I used to love the St. John's Eve Mass at Sandwich Cathedral. Of course, it is also a night of great wickedness. Worse than All Hallows' Eve. They will corrupt anything, Father. They? They who? Oh, you know. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I don't think I should say any more about that. Do you have any idea what Cabri Sankar means? <laughs> May we? I know. I bet you do not, Father, Nespa. It means goat without horns. Oh, Father, you surprise me. You do know what it means. You know what they mean by goat without horns, don't you? A human being? That's right. Slit your throat, cut out your heart. Pure evil murder. That Cabri Sankar thing. Do not continue to tease me, father. You know what it means as well as I. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. She was only a front for the real evildoers, father. And that's the truth about Marie Laveau. Do you know anything about animal masks? No, father. I don't know anything about that. 
Do you know anything about Veves? No, father. I don't know anything about that. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Oh, yes, father. It is the wickedest kind, the kind they practice here in New Orleans. Tell me more about black voodoo. I already told you, black voodoo is what they practice here. Have you ever heard of a Schattenjäger? No, father. I don't know anything about that. Do you know anything about human sacrifice here in New Orleans? Ah, well, my great-grandmother could tell stories. She saw it. People say that sort of thing wasn't done in New Orleans. But the real voodoo queens did it. Oh, yes. Can you tell me anything else about human sacrifice? What is there to tell? They cut your heart out. Who were the real voodoo queens? Uh, well, my great-grandmother told me that Lavo was just a front, a flamboyant decoy. She distracted authorities from the real voodoo queen of Noryaz. It's been the same one for almost 200 years. She's head of a secret voodoo on fall. That's what they call the temples, you know. It's so secret, most of the voodoo people in this city don't even know about it. The real voodoo queen controlled Lavo, gave her a little bit of power, and used her like a puppet. Is there anything else you remember about the real voodoo queen? Mm, well, my great-grandmother said that the real voodoo queen was the most beautiful woman on earth. She had the most incredible copper-colored skin. Is there anything else you remember about the real voodoo queen? Uh, well, they are all brides of Satan. Other than that, I can't think of anything. Tell me about yourself. Me? I am Creole. My family has been in New Orleans for over 200 years. Real New Orleanians are French, you see. These days the city is overrun with people with no heritage at all. No offense, father. But it's true. But the French, naturellement, will always be the true blood of New Orleans. Tell me about yourself. Well, father, I don't know what else to say. Tell me more about this secret voodoo hound fool. Well, I've never seen it. I wouldn't go near it if you paid me. But it's here in Orleans, I guarantee it. I hear the drums at night, oh yes. That's why I am so ill. I tell you, those drums. But we shouldn't talk about it. They'll hear us. It's the devil's work that happens there. I can tell you. I'll show you something. Something secret. You mustn't tell anyone, father. I swear on my collar. Here it is, mon père. A true object of evil, if there ever was one. It radiates something, all right. It belonged to my great-grandmother. She told my mother that it was a token to gain entrance to the real voodoo ceremonies. You don't say. To tell you the truth, I always felt nervous about having it in the house. You know. Evil influence and all. Oh, I can see how you would, yes. And yet, I could never part with it. It's been in the family for generations. Would you bless it for me, father? I feel strange asking such a thing of you, but surely you understand. 
Bless this bracelet of a snake, even though its vibes aren't great. Let it do nobody harm when they wear it on their arm. Voodoo spirits, go away. Don't come back another day. And now, let us pray. Gabriel is carrying a lump of clay from the banks of Lake Pontchartrain. Gabriel has a thought about the clay. Bless, oh bless, this circlet of silver. Take the curse, oh take it, Wilbur. A lovely blessing, mon père. Yes, I think it made a lasting impression. Here you go. Ah, I feel so much better now. It's so nice of you to invite me in. Ah, but no, mon père. I am always happy to see one of the good fathers. Gabriel cannot open the front hall. He only needs to walk there. Well, madame, I must be gone. Of course, father. I know how busy you must be tending your flock. I'm not going back on the street looking like this. It's a Boston Napoleon. How apropos. The Napoleon House is one of the French Quarter's very old, very classic neighborhood bars and restaurants. Gabriel is found here frequently. A street drummer has found a spot outside the Napoleon House. An unhappy looking man explores the dangers of drinking alone. A young woman is enjoying drinks with her boyfriend. Hmm, kind of cute. Nah. A young man is deep into conversation with his girlfriend and feeling no pain. A man in a loud tie stares morosely at a chessboard. A sharp-eyed gentleman in a grey sports coat hunches over a chessboard, chuckling to himself. Gabriel's already created enough bad karma in this bar. Gabriel and the bartender are old pals. His name is Stonewall King, and he knows everybody round here. What's up? Buddy, I think the place you're looking for is down on Bourbon. Hi, how's it going? It's been worse. Business picking up? Some. Mostly locals, as usual. Could I ask you a few questions? Sure. I'm not too busy at the moment. What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? <laughs> I don't believe in it myself. I invented a drink once called Lavo's Tomb. But it wasn't very popular. Some people do believe, though. Even some of our regulars here at Napoleon House. What can you tell me about voodoo? I'm no expert. You might want to talk to someone who believes in it. What do you know about the voodoo murders? It's all over the papers. Some kind of serial killings. What do you know about 
the voodoo murders. Well, they say a lot of voodoo stuff is found near the bodies. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Greatest city in the world. I'd never want to live anywhere else. What can you tell me about New Orleans? This city must get a million tourists a year, especially around Mardi Gras. Do you know anything about snakes? What about them? Oh, just anything. Man, you ask the weirdest questions. I don't know anything about snakes. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? All I know is it's some kind of voodoo holiday. Does the phrase cabri sans cœur mean anything to you? You know what goes in it? I don't think it's a drink. Oh, then I probably don't know anything about it. Have you ever heard of Marie Laveau? Sure. She's kind of the patron saint of voodoo in New Orleans. Don't know too much about her, but tourists sure get off on all that stuff. Have you ever heard of Marie Laveau? There's a voodoo museum in town. They know more about it than I do. Can you tell me anything about a secret voodoo hound fool? Are you kidding? Around here? Hope they aren't serving drinks. Well, if they are, I don't think anyone in his right mind would want one. Can you tell me anything about a secret voodoo hound fool? Are you kidding? Well, if they are, I don't think anyone in his right mind would want one. Do you know anything about animal masks? Come Mardi Gras, you see all kinds of masks in here. Do you know anything about Veves? Never heard of it. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Black voodoo? Nah. I prefer not to think about that kind of stuff personally. Crime, perversion, weirdos. <laughs> This makes me depressed. Have you ever heard of a Shotten Jaeger? Never heard of it. Tell me about yourself. A good bartender listens to other people's life stories without telling his own. Tell me about yourself. A good bartender listens to other people's life stories without telling his own. What can you tell me about your regulars in here? This crowd? The ones you see are mostly regulars. That guy and girl in the corner come here a lot. When they're not fighting, they're all over each other. In other words, they're in love. What can you tell me about your regulars in here? See those old guys at the chess table? That's Sam and Marcus. They played every day for 20 years. Sam, the one with the purple jacket, He's lost every one of those games. It's not that he's a bad player. I've seen him beat guys twice as good as Marcus. But Marcus has Sam so psyched out, he loses his nerve every time. By the way, Sam, the chess player, he's into that voodoo stuff. He's always talking about spells and gree gree and stuff. Really? Thanks. What can you tell me about your regulars in here? I'd call you a regular, Gabe. And one of our local writer celebrities, too. Been coming in here, what, 10 years now? Mm, don't remind me. We're still waiting for that best seller. Don't hold your breath. Tell me about the street musicians around here. I like music as much as the next guy, but they get pretty monotonous sometimes, you know? Like that drummer right outside. They say there's been a drummer outside Napoleon House since the day it opened. I like drums, but this character really gets on my nerves. It sounds like the same thing over and over. I just want to say, enough already. Sounds like my life. Tell me about the street musicians around here. Don't know what else I could say. So what has Sam told you about voodoo? Well, about 50 years ago, Sam was too shy to talk to this pretty girl he was in love with. 
He went to a voodooine and had her make him a love charm. It was a little pouch that he had to bury under the girl's front porch. Well, he buried the pouch, and the next day he went up and talked to the girl. And, sure enough, she didn't reject him. Now she's his wife. <laughs> Poor guy. So what has Sam told you about voodoo? That's about all I can remember. Hello there. Excuse me. I was talking to the lady. And she was listening raptly, I'm sure. Hi. How's it going? Could you excuse us? We're talking here. Nothing like a good game of chess, huh? Yeah, well, this isn't a good game. This is torture. Oh, well, have fun. So, having a good game? I'm concentrating. Fine. All right. So, having a good game? Shh. I'm concentrating. Fine. All right. The small bottle is labeled Master Gambling Oil. Got a second, Sam? It's about your game. I don't have a game. That's my problem. Don't you touch those chess pieces while I'm gone, you bastard. I never needed a cheat yet, you loser. Thought you might be interested in this gambling oil. Let me see that. Master gambling oil. What's it for? It might make a good salad dressing. I'm a meat and potatoes man myself, sorry. Welcome back, loser. Shut up, Marcus. Got another second, Sam? Yeah, what is it this time? About this oil. Yeah, what about it? This is a powerful voodoo oil. Ah, go on. Really? This voodoo oil could make a nun get lucky. Really? You think it really works, huh? I'd stake my reputation as a novelist on it. Cause using voodoo might not be fair. Don't you ever wonder why Marcus wins every time? Marcus? Using voodoo? That old bastard. Pitiful, isn't it? Let me see that bottle. Oh, this looks authentic. Oh, it is. If I could really beat that bastard. Stonewall, give me a Pim's cup, would you? Coming up, Sam. How much you think I'd have put in here? Careful. You don't want to overdo it. Too much luck can be dangerous. There's no such thing as too much. Now stand back. Come on already. I'm ready to chat me. We'll see about that misty smarty big mouth. Checkmate! <laughs> Checkmate, you bastard! 
son of a bitch. Twenty years I've been waiting to say that. Checkmate, checkmate, checkmate. <laughs> you are the biggest butthead Sam Singleton that I ever met. Checkmate. You, you, you can just put this chessboard where the sun don't shine. Hallelujah, I did it! Yippee! Nice game. Nice game. Hell, I was brilliant! Of course, I gotta give some of the credit to that oil of yours. I've been losing to that guy for 20 years. If you ever need a favor, you come to Sam, you hear? Will do. So, how do you feel now? Couldn't be better. Can I ask you some questions now? Luke, I'd be glad to help you out, but I've been stuck in this bot too long to know much about anything. Could you do anything with this? What is this? A clay mold? Hmm... Well, I am a jeweler, you know. And I owe you one. Would you like me to cast this for you? Hmm... If you can. You got it, pal. Actually, it'll be a pleasure to get my tools out first time in years. I've been too busy playing that goddamn game. I'll have the bracelet tomorrow. Meet me here. Great, thanks. It's getting late. Gabriel decides to go home for the day. Excuse me, I'm going inside. Oh, uh, excuse me, I'm afraid St. George's is closed for the day. I'm not a customer. I'm here to see the owner. Why don't you just leave your name and number with me, and I'll tell him you stopped by. Listen, if Gabriel is here, he'll want to see me. Is he here? Really couldn't say for certain, but in the morning... Gracie, say goodnight. Ugh! You came. I didn't think you would. I didn't think I would either. Your eyes. Mm. Oh, I could show you around a little. Yeah, it's not much, but... Please, don't. I couldn't focus on much of anything right now. Yeah, I know. God, what is it about you? Just shut up and kiss me. You're not speaking to me this morning? Don't be silly. I just have nothing to say. Did you find out anything about that pattern I gave you? Yeah, I did find something. I checked the microfiche at the public library. 
I found an article about a murder in 1810. The newspaper published a part of a pattern found around the body. It looks damn close. You're incredible. All that work. Forget it. Have it your way. Have you noticed this guy outside the shop? Yeah. He gives me the creeps. I wish he'd go away. Get the hell out of here. The figure outside does not respond. Times Picahune, dated June 21st, 1993. Gabriel's eye is immediately drawn to an article about the voodoo murders. He scans it quickly. I don't believe this. They've closed the case. What case? The voodoo murders case. The paper says that the police have learned that the murders were the result of an underworld cartel war and that the war is over. That's not good. It's ridiculous. What about the killers? And the voodoo angle, they never got anything on there. I know you were into it, Gabriel. But if it's over, that's hardly a negative. Anyway, if you're that upset, why don't you talk it over with your pal Mosley? You don't get it, Grace. Just forget it, okay? Gabriel decides to check his horoscope, despite his disgust. Death walks close to you today. Resist temptation, lest his eye file on you too. Peachy. I'm going out. See ya. Sam, my man. Hey there, it's you. I got that bracelet for you. This piece was a real toughie. For some reason, the metal just wasn't setting. I must be out of practice. Well, it looks good to me. Thanks, Sam. No problem. By the way, I'm heading out of town tonight. Yeah, where to? Marcus used to tell me that if I ever beat him at chess, he'd take me around the royals. The old bastard has enough money stuffed in his mattress to cover the federal deficit, and he hates spending a penny of it. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy watching him squirm through every mile. Sounds like fun. Good luck. Are you kidding? Luck is my middle name. So, how do you feel now? Couldn't be better. Crash, the guy from Mosley's office. At the first sight of Gabriel, he slouches away like a beaten dog. Hmm, I wonder what he's up to. Hey, Crash, wait up! Crash only looks scared and keeps walking.
Hey, Crash, wait up! Crash only looks scared and keeps walking. St. Louis Cathedral. The original church on this site was built in 1724 and was named for Louis IX of France. That church burnt in the Great Fire of 1788. The present church dates from 1851. To Presbyterian. This building was begun by the Spaniards in 1795, after a fire in Jackson Square. It was intended for monks, but now it houses historical exhibits. The Pont Alba buildings are historical landmarks, built in 1849 and 1850 as residential apartments. Gabriel is standing on the balcony of a building across the street from Jackson Square. On the balcony are four mounted binoculars. Nice plant. Four pairs of binoculars are rigorously mounted on the cement floor. That's Crash. What the hell is he up to with that drama? Detective Mosley. Hard at work, I see. Yeah, yeah, what is it, you wanker? Knight, I hate to tell you this, but you're out of a book. The voodoo murders case has been closed. I had a feeling you were gonna say that, son of a bitch. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. What's the status on the voodoo murders case? The case? What case? I told you, the voodoo murders case is closed. How can you just close it? It's not solved, is it? Oh, it's solved. Turns out the Chicago Mafia was trying to invade local territory, using Mississippi for drug running now that Florida's so hot. What we had here was a little resistance from local businessmen. Word came in this morning that the Chicago group is giving up and pulling out of New Orleans. But that doesn't bring the killers to justice. Well, the boys upstairs seem to figure it this way. Let the slime kill each other. Better the vermin we know than the Chicago vermin, I guess. The attitude in the department is that we've just been done a huge favor. Well, they're probably right. What about the local cartel? Are you just gonna let them go? At least they're part of us. We'll deal with them over time, always have. New Orleans is pretty clean that way, you know. Well, that's the illusion, isn't it? Look, I'm not totally in agreement here either, but what can I do? These guys are not about to get caught. I'm disappointed about the book, too. Look, next big murder case I get, I'll call you in and we'll do that one upright, okay? In fact, I could probably dig up some old cases and you could spice them up. No, thanks. How can I convince you to reopen the case? 
Look, the department's not interested. So? Couldn't you make them interested? With what? I've got seven bodies and still no leads. The voodoo angle's worthless. And besides, these people aren't hurting anybody but out-of-town drug dealers and hitmen. The voodoo stuff is not worthless. It's the key to the whole thing. And these people are dangerous. They need to be stopped. Okay. You want me to reopen this case? Prove what you just said. What do you mean? You need to... Prove there's a legitimate voodoo cult in New Orleans. Prove that they're a threat. Get me a lead on the cult. Tell me about yourself. What do you want to talk about that for now? We're not doing the book anymore. Besides, you already know too much about me, Knight. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Black voodoo? Sounds like a put on to me. Do you know anything about veves? What? Veves. They're ritualistic patterns used in voodoo. You know, like those marks we found around the body. You know what the department says about that night, that voodoo stuff is fake. Yeah, well, they're wrong. These veves. Look, just stop worrying about them, Marks. I don't think they're relevant. Do you know anything about animal masks? Animal masks? You mean like those Halloween masks they sometimes use in robberies? I don't think so. More like real animals. Never ran across anything like that. Well, I'll be seeing you. Have a good one. Crash is huddled in a pew. He looks seriously ill. Hey, what are you doing here? I I'm praying, leave me alone. I need to talk to you, ask you some questions. No way, man. I'm too sick. Let's go away. Come on. I have to know what you know about these voodoo people. You, you don't know nothing about nothing, man. You're so far out of it, you wouldn't understand anything. Just like that friend of yours, Mosley. Go away. I'm not like Mosley. I know more than you think I do. I'll believe you. Forget it, man. It's not worth my breath. Do you recognize this? Where'd you get that? Why? Do you know something about it? Know something about it? Look at this. Grash opens his shirt and reveals a tattoo. It's the same. The same snake. It's their sign. The mark of the snake. Without it, they'll never let you get close. The sign of the snake. Right. Your tattoo, my bracelet. Now, do you believe that I know something about these people? Yeah. You know about them, I... <coughs> I guess. Will you answer some questions for me now? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll talk to you a little. I'll make it fast. Tell me what you know about voodoo. Look, just take some advice. Stay away from this voodoo shit. You don't really want to know, man. Believe me. Just do yourself a favor and leave me alone. Come on, tell me what you know about voodoo. I told you, man. Leave me alone. Can't you see I'm dying? Tell me about yourself. I'm sick, dying, eating the big enchilada. What the fuck else matters? I want to know about the voodoo murders. You're on the right track. 
That, that's all I can say. I'm not going to risk my life by, by talking about it, man. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Man, can't you see I'm sick? Don't bug me with stupid questions. Do you know anything about snakes? The eyes. Snake's eyes. Dumbala. Okay, calm down. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? Nothing. Just leave me alone. Do you have any idea what Cabri Saint Gar means? I never heard of that. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? I don't know her. Honest. Tell me what you know about a secret voodoo hanfour in New Orleans. Oh, man. Sh sh shut up about that shit. Can't you see I'm sick? Aren't you trying to kill me? Do you know anything about animal masks? No. Leave me alone about that shit. What do you mean? You've seen them, haven't you? Not me. <laughs> Leave me alone! Do you know anything about Veves? I never heard of that. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Black voodoo? What the hell is that? Voodoo's voodoo, man! Have you ever heard of a Shotten Jaeger? I never heard of that. I saw you talking to that drummer. What did you tell him? You saw me with the drummer? Nobody's supposed to see. Shit! I blew it again. I promise you won't say nothing to no one. It'll get back to him. Everything does. I promise me you won't tell anyone you saw me. Okay. But you have to tell me everything I want to know. Okay. Okay. I was sending a message, man. These, these, these rotter drummers posted around the quarter. <laughs> they see everything. And they report. Report? How? The drums, man. It's, a, it's some kind of code. Tell me what you know about a secret voodoo hanfour in New Orleans. All right. There's this, uh, this is an uh, underground cartel in, in New Orleans. A voodoo cartel. They control everything that happens on the street. I mean everything, bought or sold. <laughs> they have their fingers in the legit world too. Banks, foreign stuff, you name it. There's supposed to be this temple. What you said, a helm for. That's their headquarters. I heard people say it's it's uh, underground. Uh, somewhere in the French Quarter. I don't know where. Have you ever been there? Uh, no, no. I, I, I've never been in it. I'm a nobody. A runner. But I, I, I saw them once. Out at the lake. They became animals, man. Beasts. I remember the eyes. <laughs> the eyes. Hey, are you okay? The eyes. The eyes of the snake. I think I should go get a doctor. Hey, are you alright? Someone, I need help. The eyes of the snake. Dambala. Oh. What snake? Crash! Crash spasms twice more, then died as Gabriel wanted. Oh, God. Poor bastard. Crash's face shows signs of strangulation. His death was not a pleasant one.
on Crash's chest is a tattoo of a snake. I guess I better copy this tattoo. It's getting late. Gabriel decides to go home for the day. Hello? It's me. I can't sleep. Oh, me neither. Can I? Yes. Come. Are you okay, Gabriel? Sure. Great. Why? I'm worried about you. If I were any better, Grace, I'd be dead. Now, what's up? Uh, you got another package this morning. FedEx from Germany. I was expecting that. Where is it? Well, it kind of came open, but I salvaged the contents. There was a letter from your great-uncle Wolfgang in a journal. The package just came open, huh? How'd you like the journal? Someone has to look after you. You're in trouble. In case you don't know it. Yeah, you've been reading my horoscope again, haven't you, Grace? Just read the journal carefully, Gabriel. Please. I got it. St. George's books. <clears throat> oh, Professor Hartridge, I'm glad you called. Did you... You did? Wait, slow down. The Aigri? Really? You think that's them? The wheel within a wheel. A goon but Aigri, huh? Well, that does sound like it. Dambala, the snake. That's the wavy pattern at the bottom, okay. The 1791 slave revolt in Santo Domingo. Well, why would the Veve show up there? Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Look, I'll come over as soon as I can. Okay. Relax, Professor. I'm excited too, but you're gonna give yourself a heart attack. Okay. Thanks. See ya. I wish you'd tell me what's going on. I swear you're gonna step into a hole you may never get out of. Don't look so worried. No one knows what I'm doing. I'm perfectly safe. And I'm getting some great stuff for the book. Besides, there's something about all this. My dreams. What about your dreams? Nothing. I'll be careful, I promise. It's a newspaper clipping from the year 1810. The newspaper clipping describes a ritualistic murder in Congo Square. It includes a rough sketch of a pattern found around the body. The sketch is very similar to the reconstructed Veve. The letters addressed to Gabriel from Wolfgang Ritter. Wolfgang's letter says, Dear Gabriel, please read the enclosed journal carefully. It might help you understand your family's special obligations and our current predicament. God be with you, Uncle Wolfgang. 
Gunter Ritter's diary is leather-bound. Its parchment pages are old and fragile. Gabriel reads through the pages Wolfgang marked. He reads of Gunter Ritter's journey to Charleston as witch hunter, hired by the townsmen to solve a series of ritualistic murders. He reads about Gunter's meeting with a beautiful slave woman, Tetolo, and of Gunter's tormenting urges for her. Oh, bastard. He reads of their physical union and passion, and of Gunter's investigations into the murders. The victims were all crew members on a certain slaving expedition to Africa, it seems. The second to the last entry described Gunter's plan to set a trap for the coven committing the murders. He found the name of one of the surviving members of the crew, a man now living in the West Indies. Gunter has spread a false rumor that the man is returning to Charleston. He himself will impersonate a sailor and allow himself to fall into the hands of the coven. Naturally, Gunter has arranged for able-bodied assistants to follow and attack the coven before they can do him harm. Olsey, son of a bitch, wasn't he? Gabriel turns to the final entry of the journal. Times Picahune, dated June 22nd, 1993. Disgusted with the state of the voodoo murder case, Gabriel turns right to his horoscope. The shadow upon you is no longer reversible. Wonderful. Like I haven't tried. Gabriel cannot see a way to use that. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Have you ever heard of Dumbala? Ooh, no. Makes my skin crawl, though. Does Ogun Badakri mean anything to you? No, sorry. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Black voodoo? Now, what are you getting yourself into? Nothing you need to know about. Do you? I know there are dark forms of any major religion. Where there's a yin, there's a yang. Speaking of yin and yang... But no. I don't know anything really about voodoo, dark or otherwise. Sorry. Do you know anything about Rada drums? Rada drums? No, afraid not. Do you have messages for me? Nope. None right now. Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? Could you research Rada drums for me? Rada drums? Sure. I don't think we have any books on that topic in the shop, but I'll contact our suppliers. Assuming any of them will extend you any credit. Tell them it's an emergency. Uh-huh. I can see where a Rada drum book would be incredibly urgent. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay. Gabriel watches the man watching the shop.
I'm going out. Good luck. Hey, Hot Ridge, what's a good word? Hot Ridge? Yeah. Oh, God, not again. Something about Hartridge's death mask reminds Gabriel of the way Crash checked out. Not a pretty ending. Whatever Hartridge may have learned, he cannot share with Gabriel now. At least, not vocally. Dr. Hartridge's desk is remarkably neat, especially considering the rest of the room. On the desk is a sheet of paper with some scribbled notes. It looks recent. These notes look interesting. Partridge's notes are scribbled on notepad paper. Partridge's notes are scribbled on notepad paper. Before leaving the university, Gabriel notifies campus security about Hartridge's body. Why is it so dark in here? Dr. John? Hello? Uh-oh. Day, Mr. Knight. That thing just tried to kill me. He did? I am sorry. The museum is closed today, you see, and we were not expecting visitors. But if you will excuse me, Mr. Knight, I must go look for him. He is incredibly valuable. You don't need to ask twice. I'm out of here. By the way, you might want to lock your door next time you're closed. Not a bad idea. Goodbye, Mr. Knight. The second message made from the voodoo crosses is on the wall. Let me get these new marks down. It's Gabriel's sketch of the series of crosses from the Laveau tomb wall, with Magentia Moonbeam's translation penciled in. It's Gabriel's sketch of the new series of crosses from the Laveau tomb wall. Gabriel checks the two messages for duplicate symbols and transfers the letters from the matches to the new message. He finds that he has the translation for all of the symbols, except for three. Gabriel should at least wait until the watchman is gone before defacing the tomb.
I think I'll leave a message of my own. Pleased with his message, Gabriel tosses the breakdown. Now, if only DJ reads it in time. What happened to you? Who? Me? Nothing. Why? Well, you're kind of a pale green color. Come here. Pale green, you say? Charming. What's that on your face? I'm sure you'll tell me. Looks like a sparkly or something. Got it. I love it when you pick stuff off my face, Grace. Hmm. Well, excuse me. There's something in the ashtray. Looks like the python left me a souvenir. Very interesting. It's a snake scale from the Voodoo Museum's Python. <laughs> Gabriel is carrying a scale he found near the crime scene at Lake Pontchartrain. The Gabriel magnifies the snake scale from the Voodoo Museum's Python. The iridescent scale is brilliantly hued with greens and purples. Gabriel magnifies the scale from the lake. It's hued with purples and greens. It matches the scale from the Voodoo Museum. He places the two scales together. I'm going out. See ya. One of the Getty drummers watches the police station. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? Do you know anything about a secret voodoo hound fool? Hound what? Hound fool. It's a temple. Huh. Sounds like someone's pulling your leg on that one. Do you know anything about Veve? Veves? Never heard of it. Have you ever heard of Dumbala? No, oh, sounds foreign or something. Does Ogun Badaikri mean anything to you? Hell no. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Black voodoo? Isn't that kind of the same thing? Actually, no. Well, all I know about voodoo is to keep away from it. 
You should too, Knight. Do you know anything about Rada drums? I like Lawrence Welk myself. Has that beignet guy been by yet today? I'm starved. I haven't seen him in a while. I don't think he's coming by here anymore. Damn! You can't count on anything these days. Hey, hey, hey! Yeah, yeah, what is it, you wanker? Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer. Ask away. Do you know anything about snakes? The only thing I know about snakes is I don't like them. And do you know anything about a secret voodoo hound fool? I told you, you're nuts. Drop it. Do you know anything about Veves? I told you, I don't think that's relevant. Have you ever heard of Dumbala? You mean Gumbo? No, I mean Dumbala. Never heard of him. Does the name Ogun Badakri mean anything to you? Say what? Ogun Badakri. It's a Voodoo Loa. Speak English or shut up, Knight. Sorry, I didn't mean to confuse you. Guess I'll take that as a no. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Black voodoo? Sounds like a put on to me. Do you know anything about Rada drums? No. They're these African drums, and they're being used all over the French Quarter to send messages for the voodoo cartel. Yeah, right. When them drums announce a blue light special at OK Mart, let me know. Tell me about yourself. What do you want to talk about that for now? We're not doing the book anymore. Besides, you already know too much about me, Knight. What's the status on the voodoo murders case? I told you, it's closed. Crash is dead. What? What are you talking about? I let him go yesterday. Yeah, and I watched him die yesterday at St. Louis Cathedral. At the cathedral? Guess he was trying to get a last-minute A-train ticket, eh? Poor bastard. I think you should go find the body at the morgue. He was killed by the voodoo cult. Crash said. Crash said? Did he mention pink elephants, too? Aren't you going to investigate? Civilians. Did you actually see someone kill him? No. Actually, I was with him when he died. Could have been poison, though. Yeah, well, when they get the body in, they'll do a quick autopsy. Standard procedure. If it's anything other than an overdose, I'll get a report. But it won't happen. I know these guys. Lock them up overnight, and they tend to overdo it the next day. Your professionalism is astonishing. There's been another murder. A professor at Tulane. Oh, Christ, you're not gonna start this again. Just listen. This guy's name is Hartridge. He was a professor in African studies at Tulane. Yesterday, I went to see him about the voodoo murders case. He agreed to do some research for me. He calls me up this morning, tells me he's onto something big. And when I get over there, the guy's dead. You know, you're really getting your ass in a sling over this thing, Knight. It's not about me. Look, Hartridge's death looked just like crashes. I'm telling you, they were both murdered. And by the same people who did the voodoo murders. Did either Crash or this new guy have their hearts ripped out? No. Then there's nothing to link either to the voodoo murders M.O. Besides that, the case is closed, Knight. If the coroner's report asks for a homicide investigation on either of these guys, fine. But it's not going to be related to the voodoo murders case unless we find damn good reason to do so. But I'm the link to the voodoo murders case, don't you see? 
Look, if I were you, I wouldn't repeat that to anyone. If I weren't an old friend of yours, I might take you seriously and lock you up. As it is, maybe you should start keeping your mouth shut. Not involve other people with this shit. You think it's so dangerous. How can I convince you to reopen the case? I already told you. You need to... Prove there's a legitimate voodoo cult in New Orleans. Prove that they're a threat. Get me a lead on the cult. Take a look at these notes. They're from Professor Hartridge at Tulane University. Yeah? And what about them? They confirm that the pattern from the murders is of African origin. Hmm. This is interesting, if true. But how do you know he had the right pattern? You know those marks you found around the murder victims? This is a reconstruction of the whole pattern. What makes you think this is an accurate reconstruction? Well, I borrowed the partial patterns from your police file and did my own tracing of the pattern at Lake Pontchartrain. An architectural artist reconstructed it for me from the partials. Really? So that's what Hartridge used, huh? I guess his analysis is on target then. Okay, the murders were committed by a legitimate voodoo cult. You proved your point. This is a newspaper clipping about a murder committed in 1810. That murder is an exact match of the voodoo murders, right down to the marks around the bodies. Hmm. This does sound like the same M.O. 1810? 1810. They killed then, they're killing now. Isn't that proof that they're likely to kill again? That they are a threat? Okay, they're a threat. I have these two snake scales. One's from the crime scene at Lake Pontchartrain. The other's from a snake in the Voodoo Museum on Ursulines and Charters. Is this common? Do they all look alike? Not at all. They're both constrictor scales, and the coloring is the same. A python's coloring is quite individualistic. A python? That's right. Hardly an indigenous snake to Louisiana. Somehow, some way, the Voodoo Museum's python was at the scene of the Lake Pontchartrain murder. Well, I'd call that a lead, all right. It certainly suggests certain lines of inquiry at the museum. Not bad work, Knight. If we can tie them into this voodoo cult, we just might have something. Okay, I'll reopen the case. I hate to admit it, but you've done some pretty good detective work here, Knight. Well, you know what they say. Imitation is a sincerest form of flattery. Well, point taken. Glad I could inspire you. I'll check around the department, but I have a feeling I'm on my own. In fact, I better lock up this office just in case I step on a few toes. Come on. Now, lay low and let me handle this. Yeah, fine. It's getting late. Gabriel decides to go home for the day.
Damn. What is it? What's wrong? Gabriel? I see it, Grace. Hold on. There's no one in the shop, and I know there's no one in back. It's okay. Okay? Gabriel, that thing is still barely alive. How could someone do this? With a knife, maybe? God, don't even start. We should call the police. No. I'll take care of it. But Gabriel... I said I'll take care of it. Why don't you go get some coffee? I'll have it all cleaned up before you get back. Oh, they know where you live now. Shh. It's gonna be fine. Now go on. Are you sure you don't want to go home? I could close the shop today. No. I'd rather keep busy. I'll be fine. At least that creepy guy is gone. Oh, Not that they aren't still watching. Anyway, speaking of keeping busy... We got that book you ordered in this morning. The one on Rada drums. Really? Great. Grace actually managed to find a book on the Rada drum code. The book contains several pages of Rada drum code. I see it. Stay back. Special delivery, it seems. Gabriel cannot take that. It's just an envelope. I can see that. Gabriel eyes the surreptitiously delivered envelope. There doesn't seem to be anything unusual about it. The envelope is unmarked. Gabriel opens the envelope and finds a note from Mosley and a small brass key. The key is from Mosley. It's a note from Mosley. Mosley's note says, Gabe, I have to go underground with this thing. It runs wide and deep throughout the department and the city board. I'm already being watched. It was suggested I take vacation time, so I am. At least as far as they know. Try to keep out of this. It's too hot for a rookie. Just in case, I'm sending you my office key. You might find some useful things there. P.S. I think this note will look great in the book, don't you? Make sure you save it. The note is signed, Detective Mosley. Times Picayune, dated the 23rd of June, 1993. 
Gabriel finds an article about St. Jean's Eve. It discusses the day's Catholic roots and its adoption by voodoo devotees. In the early to mid-1800s, St. Jean's Eve was celebrated with elaborate voodoo gatherings at Lake Pontchartrain, Bayou St. Jean, and other sites outside the city. These days, the day is commemorated commercially in some of the local shops, and a few churches still hold a St. Jean's Eve Mass. Despite his better judgment, Gabriel reads his horoscope. Today you will either die or your life will change forever. Sure, why not? It is St. John D. They'll be out tonight for sure. But where? Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Tell me about yourself, Grace. What else do you want to know? Just tell me anything at all. I just got my master's in history and classics. Nothing, I guess. Never mind. Suit yourself. Do you have messages for me? Nope. None right now. The tracing is of a snake tattoo from Crash's chest. Will you do me a favor? What? Use your paints to copy this snake tattoo onto my chest. Now why on earth would you want me to do that? It will be a good way for us to get closer. Really? Well, no. Come on, Grace. I really need that tattoo. Then give me a good reason. It wards off evil. It's good luck, Snake. Yeah, well, about that tattoo job, good luck finding someone else to do it. I can't tell you, Grace. It's a secret research thing. I see. Well, I'd like to help you, but I'm not allowed to do snake tattoos. It's a secret artist thing. I'm going to a party tonight. Costume, you know. You don't say. I guess you're going with Maya. Uh, yeah. That's right. And why should I help you out when I don't even like Maya? You know what they say? All the world loves lovers. You know what else they say? No. I'm sure Malia would appreciate it. Really? Do you think? Maybe she'd even let me into one of her hospitals the next time I split my head open. Imagine that. Grace! No, no, I just couldn't live with that much richness in my life. I'd rather stay the poor nothing that Malia Getty never knew. Thanks anyway. I know you feel inferior to Malia, but, you know, get over it. Your persuasive power is astonishing, but I'd hate to use my inferior painting skills on your manly chest and ruin it for her. No. Well, if you're jealous about my feelings for her, you know that's not it. I just think, as your friend, that she's trouble. It's perfectly understandable. I know you have certain feelings for me, quite naturally. Me? I would rather be hung by my hair over a bed of scorpions. I know it must be hard having it in your face like this. No chance to avoid hearing about it, seeing it day by day. Fine, I'll do it. Just shut up. Can we at least go in the back? Sure, but could you say that one more time and pout your lips more? Ugh. What did I say?
All right. Let's go. The shirt, please. You don't know how long I've been waiting for this moment. Now... Hold still. Maybe you'd like to tie me up? One more remark, and I'm leaving. Okay, okay. Done. It's just stunning. Sorry I couldn't make it last longer. Well, it was about what I expected from you. It's frightening. It's terrifying. Don't miss. Run for your life. Now playing at the state and fun theater. Are you going to be okay here by yourself? I'll, I'll... I'll be just... just fine. Just... fix this, okay? I'm trying, Gracie. A vendor selling beignet and cafe au lait has taken the lucky dog vendor's old spot. Hello. What can I do for you, sir? What the heck are beignets, anyway? Deep fried sweet dough with powdered sugar on top. New Orleans donuts, sir. Say, haven't I seen you before? I get around the French Quarter. Used to be at Royal and Conti. What happened to the guy who used to be here? The lucky dog guy? Uh, I took over his spot. You say you used to be at Royal and Conti? That's right. Nice place. Uh, yeah. I always did pretty well there. Why'd you leave Royal and Conti? Well, the guy who used to be here, the lucky dog guy, uh, he was my cousin Ralph. He went off to college, see, and this spot came open. I thought Jackson Square'd be a better gig, you know? Tourists and all. Is it? Well, uh, no, actually. Why don't you go back there? Do you think? I, I, I've been kind of torn. Must be the weather. These thick clouds we've had all week. I'm just not seeing the crowds here that I expected. I definitely think you should go back to Royal and Conti. Really? I'm glad you think so. I always liked that beat. But I thought I ought to give this a shot. Oh, absolutely. The grass is always greener. Exactly. You're right. I'm going back over there today. Gabriel listens carefully to the drums and opens his Rada book to translate.
If Gabriel's translation of the drum code is correct, there'll be a conclave tonight in the swamp. That must be the bayou. It looks like someone found and moved Crash's body. May I help you, my child? I'd like to make a confession. All right, if it will make you feel better. I've done some pretty rotten things to my friend Mosley. Rotten? What do you mean? Practical jokes, insults, among other things. I see. Are you sorry? Well... Pray for forgiveness and say three rosaries. Is there anything else? Nope, that's it. Goodbye, then. Peace go with you. Benye guy, he's back. Where? Grab me three or four, would ya? Forget it, I'm broke. Rats. You stay put. I'll be back in a minute. There's a tracking device in the drawer. This tracker might come in handy. This device is called a tracker. Gabriel remembers a time when he and Mosley used it <laughs> illegally with a couple of babes in a white convertible. It operates as follows. The signal device attaches to an object, such as a car. The signal device emits a signal that appears on the tracker, L-E-D, allowing the object to be tracked. It's a signal device for the tracker. Hey, get out of there, you. Sorry, just looking for a restroom. Hello, Dr. John. Glad you could return to us, Mr. Knight. An official voodoo wish and stump. Rub it and make a wish, a card say. Funny, I say the same thing to women. I wish Malia Getty was permanently grafted to my thighs. 
I wish my publisher would actually promote one of my novels for a change. I wish Grace were as hot as she looks. I wish my publisher would actually promote one of my novels for a change. Professor Hartridge said that in Vudang, a small ritual coffin is called a Sikke Madule. Could I ask you some more questions? Of course. I also find our dialogue stimulating. Do you know anything about a secret voodoo hound fool? Don't be ridiculous, Mr. Knight. The voodoo churches in the city have no need for secrecy. Do you know anything about Vevez? I believe they have something to do with Haitian voodoo, but that is not really my area. Have you ever heard of Dambala? Of course. It is one of the lore. Are you sure you don't know anything about Ogun Badagri? I am afraid I have little else to say about that subject. Do you know anything about Radha drums? There are some against the wall, but I do not play myself. You don't know anything about a drum code? I do not believe there is such a thing, Mr. Knight. Do you know Malia Getty? Should I? She referred me to your museum. Many have read about our museum in the newspapers, Mr. Knight. That's a good point. Is there anything else I should know about hoodoo? Not if your interest is primarily in voodoo. Hoodoo is of interest to those who study rural folk traditions, but it will not aid you in understanding true voodoo. Gabriel slips the signal device into the Seke module. Can I assist you, Mr. Knight? Hmm? No, just looking. I hate to rush you, Mr. Knight, but I am afraid I must close the museum early this evening. This is St. John's Eve, and it's getting on towards dusk. I have things I must do. I see. No problem. I'll just... Leave. Goodbye, Mr. Knight. May the spirits guard you well tonight. The break in the trees marks the exit from the bayou. Bayou Saint-Jean seems denser, thicker, darker than Gabriel remembers. In the twilight of heavy growth, everything looks the same. This device is called a tracker. It operates as follows. The signal device attaches to an object. Gabriel pulls out the tracking device, hoping that the Sheke Madule made it to the ritual and that this thing will work. All right, there's a blip. They must be here with the Sheke Madule. Gabriel hopes this tracking thing is working correctly.
Didn't he just come from that direction? Or did he? Damn Mosley and his infernal machine. This better be working. Bayou Saint-Jean seems denser, thicker, darker than Gabriel remembers. Gabriel can barely focus on the LED with those drums in his head. He hopes he's reading it correctly. Gabriel hopes this tracking thing is working correctly. Gabriel feels so turned around. Is this thing working? Welcome, Brother Crocodile. Please join the other celebrants. Yes, Dr. John. Uh, Brother Eagle. But first, name the great serpent who crushes all in his coils. Papa Gede? You are no believer. You must die for violating our sacred circle. You. I knew it. Uh, hi there, Dr. John. You shall pay for this violation. I really don't want to be dead. Can we try that again? Welcome, Brother Crocodile. Please join the other celebrants. Yes, Dr. John. Uh, mm, Brother Eagle. But first, name the great serpent who crushes all in his coils. Dumbala. You are correct, Brother Crocodile. Who is the destroyer of men? Ogun Badagri. You are correct, Brother Crocodile. Enjoy yourself well tonight. <laughs> Gabriel! 
kembali ya. No. You cannot change your destiny or ours. No. I will fight. I will destroy. No. <laughs> Where is your necklace now, witch hunter? Where are your pretty, pretty chairs? Gabriel! Gabriel, wake up! Ow, my head! It's about time. I've been trying to wake you for hours. There's no time to lose. I had another dream. It wasn't a dream, believe me. Now come on, get dressed. Wait a minute. I'm starting to remember. Something about Malia. She's the head priestess of the voodoo cartel. They're responsible for the murders. They've been doing it for years. Malia? Last night she was the leopard. Like in my dreams, Grace. I know. Those dreams were a warning. Now come on, get dressed. But last night, Malia changed. She became someone, something else. And then I blacked out, I think. How did I get home? I followed you last night. I had my doubts about the Gettys. Did you know that they arrived in New Orleans in 1800? Just in time for the voodoo influx. I knew you were going to try to sneak into a ceremony last night, so I followed you. Lucky for you that I did. If you'd been left at the circle last night, I don't know what she would have done to you. You're wrong. Malia wouldn't hurt me. What about Tetelo? Tetelo? They were chanting that last night. That's the name from Gunter's journal. The woman who took the talisman. Yes. Gabriel, it's your destiny you're facing. You can't just blunder your way through this or you'll end up dead. Tedelo will be after you now. You have to call your great uncle in Germany. Uncle Wolfgang? Yes. He knows more about this than we do. Okay. I'll call him. But Malia isn't responsible for those things, Christ. It's that spirit, that Loa. It's Tetelo. Yeah. Possession is convenient that way. Call Wolfgang, Gabriel. I'll be in the shop. Guten Tag, Sie haben Schloss Ritter erreicht. This is Gabriel Knight. Can I speak to Wolfgang, please? Ja, Herr Knight. Einen Moment, bitte. Gabriel, it's so good to hear your voice. I had such a dream last night. There's a good reason for that, Uncle Wolfgang. We need to talk. Gabriel fills in Wolfgang on the events of the previous evening. Ach, it is even worse than I thought. You bet it is. We have to talk about what I'm supposed to do. What can you tell me about voodoo? It sounds as though you have learned much during your investigation in New Orleans. Perhaps you will fill me in when we have a chance to sit down and talk. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I know only what you have told me. They seem to be very similar to the killings in Gunther's journal. What can you tell me about New Orleans? 
It was just another American city to me until I started dreaming about you. Now I feel it is not safe for you there. I wish you would leave. Do you know anything about snakes? I have not studied the subject. I have an intense dislike for them. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I'm afraid I've never heard of it. Do you have any idea what Cabri Saint Gar means? No, what does it mean? It means goat without horns. It's a term used for human sacrifice in Voodoo. Well, let's hope we can avoid any more of that in this family. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? No, I'm afraid not. I've heard rumors of a secret hound fool here in New Orleans. Yeah, I am sure they have a temple there, and probably a very elaborate one. You should not go near it, though. Not alone. Do you know anything about animal masks? Yes. Tetelos people wear animal masks for their rituals, don't they? It is not at all uncommon. Many occult groups are based heavily on animal totems. Animals have such pure, primal traits. Spirituality, good or bad, is about reaching these pure levels. Aggressive and cunning like the snake. Agile and nurturing like the monkey. Even our family is associated with the image of a lion. Do you know anything about Veves? It is a visual symbol of one or more lore. Each law has its own sign, which is used to summon it. Have you ever heard of Dambala? Dambala is a snake. He is a loa, a voodoo god. Yes, he's one of the primary loa of the Gedi tribe. I see. Good work. That information might prove useful. Does the name Ogun Badakri mean anything to you? It is a voodoo lore, is it not? Yes, a particularly nasty one, so I understand. Have you come across anything about it in your research? He seems to be feared by most voodoo groups. I haven't come across very much specific information. Do you know anything about black voodoo? My library contains many books on the occult and religions and I have read about some particularly evil voodoo cults. But you, at this point, have more direct experience than I. What can you tell me about Shatten Jaegers? Yes, of course. I sometimes forget how little you know of the family, Gabriel. I never understood how Heinz could allow his sons to remain ignorant. But now is not the time for that discussion. Schattenjäger is really two words in English, Gabriel. Schatten means shadow, and Jäger means hunter. Shadow hunter? Yes. Shadow hunter. Tell me more about Schattenjägers. Uh, we Ritters have been Schattenjägers for many centuries. No one is sure when it began or how, but we have records of ancestors as early as the 13th century fulfilling this role. Some believe that the role was given us when... Ah, but such fantasies cannot be of use to you at the moment, Gabriel. Do you know anything about Radha drums? Radha drums? You mean ceremonial drums? Yes. The Getty tribe uses drummers around the French Quarter as relay messengers to keep track of their business. Hmm. Those drums have a ceremonial use, too. It would be useful to know their code, Gabriel. I had Grace find some information on them. That's my boy. Tell me more about Schattenjägers. Most people are completely blind to the fact that evil does exist. It is out of vogue at the present, but I tell you, shadows of darkness, spirits, vampires, Witches, demons, these things are real. 
It is to their advantage that the world has become so scientific, so cynical. But we know they exist, Gabriel. And we hunt them. How do we hunt them? And why? Why? Because it is our duty. We are the ones who know, Gabriel. As for how, that is something you will have to learn. But uh, it is not easily explained over the phone. Tell me more about Schattenjägers. Well, we can talk more about that later, Gabriel. For now, you know enough. Tell me about yourself. I hope there will be time for that later, Gabriel, after this is all over. For now, we must deal with the matter at hand. Tell me about Tetelo. Well, from your description of the ritual last night, I'd say that Gunther's mistress, Tetelo, is now the primary lore for the Gede tribe. It seems she still controls them by possessing her female descendants and speaking through them. Do you remember in Gunther's journal he said that Tetelo was possessed by her father's lore during the killings in Charleston? This sounds similar, but Tetelo has obviously become a much more powerful lore than her father ever was. Probably because of the added power of the talisman. Tell me more about Tetelo. I believe she truly loved Gunther. After all, she was raised to be her father's daughter. Their religion was not a choice she made, but a duty she endured. How can she be blamed for that? The spirit she has become, that is a different matter. It is utterly evil. I am certain that the lower Tetler bears little resemblance to the woman Tetler was before the burning in Charleston. Tell me more about Tetelo. She once was a beautiful and intelligent woman. And she probably did not deserve Gunther's betrayal. But the Tetelo we fight now is more akin to her tribe's dark gods than to anything human in nature. Tell me more about Tetelo. She once was a beautiful and intelligent woman. Let's talk about the talisman. <sighs> I myself have only seen it in old sketches and paintings and in my dreams. It was in the family for centuries before Tetelo took it. It is believed to be as old as the role of Schattenjäger itself. The talisman has genuine power. I don't know how or why, but it is so. The Schattenjäger swore to use the power for good, never for evil. For defense, not offense. Since it fell into Tetelo's hands, I'm afraid to think what the power has been used for or what it will be used for in the future. With the talisman, Tetlo has all the power and we none. The only possible way to fight her is to regain the talisman. Then we will at least be on more equal footing. How can we regain the talisman? We've been searching for the talisman for years, ever since we lost it. It's a terrible thing to know that something powerful that was entrusted to us is in the wrong hands. The talisman is probably buried with Tetelo's remains. That's what gives her lore so much power. Is there anything else you can tell me about the talisman? The most important thing about the talisman is that it be once again in the hands of the Schattenjägers. How would we find Tetelo's remains? Ha! We have pondered that question a long time, the Ritters. There are two probabilities. The first is that her remains are with the tribe at their current location. The other is that the remains were returned to a sacred place near the tribe's original homeland. We've tried to locate Tetlo's African homeland, but Gunther says so little in his journal about her tribe, and slaving records are practically non-existent. Also, Tetler's tribe was utterly destroyed in its African form in the late 17th century. There was nothing like a census in Africa then. As for the other idea, we had no clue as to where Tetler's people went after fleeing Charleston until now. How would we find Tetler's remains again? We must locate the tribe's original African homeland. 
Her remains might be there, or they might be in New Orleans, buried among her descendants. Let's discuss the possible African homeland. All right. Have you learned anything that might help us locate it? I spoke with the Professor Hartridge. Unfortunately for him, he thinks the tribe's name was Agri and that they lived near the Fon tribe in what is now called the People's Republic of Benin. That is incredible, Gabriel. I must go research this new information in my library right now. Wait, what should I do? Stay low. If you get a chance, you might look into the possibility that Tetler's remains are somewhere in New Orleans. But don't try to broach their private areas without my assistance, Gabriel. You will make a fine shot, Nieger, but only if you are not dead. Sure, I'll wait. Bye, then, Gabriel. And remember, if you need a place of safety, come to Schloss Ritter. Goodbye, Uncle Wolfgang. Times Picayune, dated June 24th, 1993. There's nothing about the voodoo murders case in the papers today. Gabriel finds a humorous tidbit under the Life is Stranger Than Fiction column. Apparently, there were reports of ghosts in the Bayou Saint Jean last night. Various people called the newspaper with stories about hearing strange noises and seeing weird lights over the swamp. Some folks claim it's the ghost of Marie Laveau. The paper relates to similar delusions that crop up every Halloween. Gabriel's horoscope today reads, Wise is the warrior who knows when to fight and when to get the hell out of dodge. God help me, I'm actually starting to listen to this guy. Grace, about last night. I've already said everything I have to say about that. I'm going out for a bit. Be careful. Gabriel's coded messages on the wall. Hello there, got a sec? You got something to say, son? You been working here a long time? Longer than you been alive, son. I may have to be here longer than you'll be alive, for that matter. <laughs> you must enjoy the company of dead folks. Unlike the living, they ain't never given me no reason to dislike them none. The plate is up. Beneath the plate is a button. Gabriel hears the faint sound of breaking glass. Gabriel can't see anything in the dark. It's a lit button.
There's broken glass on the floor. That drawer is marked with a pattern like the veve. Mosley. Shit, I dropped my flashlight. Huh? Ouch, my head. What the hell was that? There's a wallet in the drawer. It must have fallen from Mosley's jacket when the body was moved. It's a man's wallet. There's nothing written on the wallet. Gabriel opens the wallet and finds some ID belonging to Mosley and an American's repressed card. The card has Mosley's name written on it. It expires next month. Mosley's American's repressed card. Credit. <laughs> what a concept. No one answers Grand's front door, but a note sticking from the mail slot bears Gabriel's name. The note is from Grand and says that she's taken a short trip out of town on Grace's advice. <laughs> Good old Grace. Ben, I was worried about you. For good reason, apparently. What happened? D do you need a doctor? Nothing you want to know about, and no, just some aspirin. Gabriel, this is nuts. You have to get out of New Orleans. No kidding. Well, listen. Wolfgang called while you were out. He said, and I quote, Tell Gabriel that I found what I was looking for. It's time for me to do my duty. Schloss Ritter is his now. Now, call me crazy, but I don't think that's good news. Not for Uncle Wolfie, no. What are you going to do? If I figure it out, I'll let you know. Somewhere, there's a New Orleans phone book missing one of its C pages. You've already got me, you lucky devil. You've already... Gabriel might as well leave that here. I'm doing the best I can. Hello. See the World Travel Agency. How may I help you? What are your specials? Two weeks in India for 2,000 rupees. Well, that's certainly special. Uh-huh. Is there something else I can help you with? 
How much for a trip to the Caribbean? Well, our least expensive trip is four days, three nights in St. Croix for $1,250. Of course, we have much nicer packages available. I'm sure your packages are astonishing, but that's out of my league. Is there something else I can help you with? I've always wanted to visit Anderson, Indiana. I'm so sorry, but you can't get there from here. Can you just get me out of here, please? I'd be happy to send you anywhere, sir, but I need a destination. How much for a trip to Rittersburg, Germany? Rittersburg, Germany? Hold on, let me look that up. I can fly you into Munich. That's the closest airport to Rittersburg. You can rent a car from there, or take the train. Let's see. The best price I can see for the flight is $1,400. What would you like to do? Charge it to my Americans repressed. Yes, sir. And your name was? Mosley. Feeling a little guilty. Gabriel gives the travel agent Mosley's card number and is informed that he can pick up his ticket at the New Orleans International Airport. Guess what? I'm going to Germany. Really? That's great, but how on earth could you afford? A man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. Oh my god. I wouldn't like the sound of that even if you were a man. I miss you too, Grace. Goodbye, Grace. Good luck. Of course. you, my child. I'd like to make a confession. All right, if it will make you feel better. I think I just need an overall apology to the universe. I see. Apology noted. Thanks, Father. Is there anything else? Nope, that's it. Goodbye, then. Peace go with you. Gabriel picks up his tickets at the airport and boards a plane for Munich. Wolfgang? Hello, my name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Herr Knight! Oh, kommen Sie bitte, Herren. I mean, come in, please, Herr Knight. I was not expecting you. Has Wolfgang sent you here? Uncle Wolfgang? No, I came to see him. Isn't he here? No, he is gone. I'm sorry. You came all this way. Oh, great. That's all I need. Herr Knight. Wolfgang told me all about you and gave me instructions for you to feel welcome here. Please, this is your home. You are a ritter, no? I am just doing some work. I will continue and you may make yourself comfortable. If there is anything you need, please ask me. 
You may use Wolfgang's bedroom. It is at the top of the stairs. Thank you, Miss. Uh... You may call me Gerda, Herr Knight. High up in the wall is a small window. The great hall of Schloss Ritter towers around Gabriel. He can imagine the heating bills. It's a lion's head carved in stone. A few tapestries hang on the wall. Gabriel isn't sure if they mean something or if they're just good insulation. There's a dragon's head on the wall. It looks like a real dragon's head, too. This Shadow Hunter stuff is serious. Potato. They must grow well around here. An old velvet sofa is one of the few pieces of furniture in the Great Hall. It's a shake of salt. Gerda is young and quite attractive. So, what do you do when you're not puttering around the castle? Every day I go to Riddersburg to do the daily shopping and uh, visit my friends. Have you worked here long? For the past four years, I came here when I was 18. What's it like in Riddersburg? It is very peaceful and quiet. I am sure you'll find it like a vacation, yeah? Somehow I doubt this is going to be a vacation. Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah, of course. What can you tell me about voodoo? Wolfgang is the only one who would know about that. What do you know about the voodoo murders? What murders? In New Orleans. Oh, I have not heard of them. I am sorry. Do you know anything about snakes? We do have snakes here in Germany, but I do not know much about them. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I have never heard of such a day. Do you have any idea what Cabri Saint Gaur means? That is not in a language I understand. So sorry. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? That is something Wolfgang would know about, Herr Knight. Do you know anything about black voodoo? That is something Wolfgang would know about, Herr Knight. Tell me what you know about Schattenjägers. As Wolfgang may have told you, Schattenjäger means shadow hunter. The Ritter family have always been Schattenjägers. It is a kind of priesthood, though not <laughs> as restrictive as most. Tell me what you know about Schattenjägers. Each Schattenjäger passes on his knowledge to a younger man in the Ritter line when the time is right. Tell me what you know about Schattenjägers. I am sure Wolfgang meant for you to take his place someday as Schattenjäger. Do you know anything about rider drums? Is that some sort of music? I do not know much about music, but I like the Beatles. Tell me about Wolfgang. What would you like to know? Where do you think Wolfgang went? I don't know, but I have a feeling he has gone off to go be Schattenjäger again. He is too old for such chasing around. His heart is very weak. He has not left this castle for five years, and now this. Do you know when he'll be back? I only pray he will be back. Before he left, he said, Schloss Ritter now belongs to Gabriel. It worried me so to hear him say that. I'm afraid Wolfgang knew he would never return. What is Wolfgang like? Wolfgang is a truly wise and good man. The best I have ever known. 
but his life has been so full of disappointments. What kind of disappointments? His only son died in infancy, so there was no one to carry on the family line. And the family's financial troubles have been hard on him. Wolfgang wanted to do so much for the world, but it was all he could do just to hold on to Schloss Ritter. He has not left his mark as he wished to. What is your relationship with Wolfgang? Herr Knight, my relationship with your uncle is really none of your business. You're right, Gerda. I apologize. Forget I asked. Can you show me Wolfgang's library? How do you know about his library? When we talked on the phone, he said he was going to do some research in his library. I thought maybe if I saw what he was researching... Ah, yeah. A good idea, Herr Knight, but I'm afraid I cannot show you the library. You see, I have never been in it. Only a Schattenjäger can enter the library. I see. Just tell me anything. Wolfgang has dedicated his entire life to the role of Schattenjäger. Just tell me anything. He has not had a very happy life, but I have done my best to provide him with a little comfort. Just tell me anything. He thought he was the last of the Ritter line until he found out about you. Just tell me anything. He knows the history of the Ritter family from many centuries past. Just tell me anything. He's a good man, a strong man. I am fond of him. Just tell me anything. Wolfgang has dedicated his entire life to the role of Schattenjäger. Oh, nothing, never mind. As you like, Herr Knight. Tell me something about the Ritter family. I can tell you what they say in the village, what I heard when I was small. To the villagers, the Ritters are a little, how do you say, tragic, to be pitied. They say that the Ritters were chosen by God to fight evil. But something happened. One of them was cursed, and so the Ritters lost the way. They struggle still, but like a lame dog, you see? Without the power or magic they once had. Tell me something about the Ritter family. There are legends of how powerful the family once was, of some of their mighty deeds, of the richness of the castle, and in turn, Rittersburg itself. But at the end of the 17th century, that all changed. Since then, the Ritters and Rittersburg have been in decline. Tell me something about the Ritter family. It is a troubled family here, Knight. That much I know. Tell me something about the Ritter family. It is a troubled family here, Knight. That much I know. Tell me something about Schloss Ritter. Schloss Ritter has stood for many centuries. No one knows how long. It was once the pride of Bavaria, but now it is in disrepair. Wolfgang received offers to open the castle for tourists. He has resisted though, even though the castle is in desperate need of repairs. But to him, this ground is sacred. Tell me something about Schloss Ritter. The castle has many, many rooms and passages here night. Most have been closed off and are decaying in the dark and damp. Only a few rooms have been kept up due to the cost. Didn't Wolfgang mention a library? There is a library, but I've never been in it. There are places in the castle where only the master is allowed to go. Tell me something about Schloss Ritter. Schloss Ritter is the center from which the Schattenjägers have always gone out to battle the forces of evil. Tell me something about Schloss Ritter. Schloss Ritter is the center from which the Schattenjägers have always gone out to battle the forces of evil. Tell me something about yourself. I was born in Rittersburg, the village below the castle. Tell me something about yourself. I'm not well traveled, but Wolfgang has been kind and has tutored me in many subjects. It was from him I learned to speak English. 
He must have sensed you were coming here at night and that you would have need of me. Tell me something about yourself. I'm very devoted to my position here with Wolfgang. Tell me something about yourself. I love Rittersburg. No place on earth could be as beautiful. Tell me something about yourself. I was born in Rittersburg. A magnificent stained glass window depicts the legendary battle between St. George and the dragon. A plain wooden altar occupies the center of the chapel. A cushioned kneeler at the bottom indicates that the altar is a place of prayer. Perhaps it's an illusion caused by the colored lights from the window. But this chapel gives Gabriel a sense of something truly mystical. Candelabrum flank the altar. There are pews on both sides of the center aisles. Three panels hang from each side of the chapel. Gabriel cannot determine what their purpose might be. Wolfgang's bedroom would hold Gabriel's entire studio four times over. Not exactly cozy, but Gabriel could get used to it. A gothic style window looks out over an incredible view. Either Wolfgang left very recently, or Gerdy feels quite at home in this room herself. It's the biggest bed Gabriel has ever seen. The rug looks like fur from some large animal, but what kind of animal, Gabriel could not say. Near the bed is an elaborate wooden door. It's locked. The head of a lion stares at Gabriel from above the door. The portal says, Nur de Rheinstudaf Passieren, Decent Herets is Rhein be glad. Decent Zähler Rhein we Führer Schreitich Herder durch Portal. At the moment, Gabriel can't think of a need for the salt. Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah, of course. There are some words over the locked door in Wolfgang's bedroom. What do they mean? Ah, yes. Wolfgang had me translate it as part of my English lessons. In English, it means... Only the purest here may pass. He whose heart is pure as glass. He whose soul is pure as fire. Through this portal passes higher. Great, thanks. What was that door poem again? Only the purest here may pass. What can you tell me about those wall panels in the chapel? The hangings? They describe the Schattenjäger initiation ceremony. Tell me about the Schattenjäger initiation ceremony. Each young man of the Ritter line must go through the ceremony when he dedicates himself to be a Schattenjäger. But what does the ceremony do? I do not know, Herr Knight. 
The only people present are the old Schattenjäger and the new. But I think it must be similar to a priest's ordination or a wedding, a ceremony of intent and oath. <laughs> Is there a problem, Herr Knight? You said wedding. I'm okay now. According to Gerda, the panels outline the Schattenjäger's initiation ceremony. The first panel shows hands and water. The second panel shows hair and a knife. The third panel shows a chalice on a table with ocean waves in the background. The fourth panel shows a knife and a few drops of blood. The fifth panel shows someone kneeling. The sixth panel shows a scroll. Is that a shaker of salt? Yeah, salt. Mind if I take it? No. Thanks. Outside the window, there's a nice thick ledge covered with snow. And it's only slightly off color, rather like Gabriel himself. Thinking of the first chapel panel, Gabriel washes his hands in the snow. There's a small pair of grooming scissors on the cabinet. Gabriel takes the scissors. Thinking of the second chapel panel, Gabriel cuts his hair. I hate this. There, that's plenty. It's a chamber pot. Take me back to the 20th century, please. Great, now I have a bear patch. A large display case hangs on the wall. It contains a scroll. This scroll looks interesting. A large handcraft dagger hangs on the wall. It looks quite old, but it's been polished to a high shine. That weapon might be a bit much to carry round. This dagger. It is the knife of a Schattenjäger. You may take it, Herr Knight. Everything in this castle is yours now. Thinking of the third panel, Gabriel puts the chamber pot on the altar.
Thinking of the third panel, Gabriel pours the contents of the salt shaker into the chamber pot. Thinking of the fourth panel, Gabriel holds his arm over the chamber pot and nicks it with the dagger. Oops, nearly hit an artery. Thinking of the fifth panel, Gabriel kneels at the altar. Thinking of the sixth panel, Gabriel reads the scroll. St. George, patron of the light, who hunts the shadows of the night, upon my blood I call thee now, purify me, for I vow to set my feet upon thy road, thy sword I take up for mine own. It worked, something's happening. Excuse me, I was just vacuuming. I did not know you were in here. Oh, that's all right. I've done about all I can do in here anyway. I give up. You look tired here, Knight. Why don't you go to bed? Sure, why not? I will clean everything up. You need not worry. I can't believe I cut my hair for nothing. I do. You must first burn away the past. How much sin do you have to burn? <laughs> you have used people all your life. Never committed to anything. Turn back now. But I will forget that you asked for this. No! There are only two things that redeem you. First, that you have bitter blood in your veins. Second, that three women have loved you. No problem. Yes. Now you asked for purification. You shall have it. What a night. 
I'm so all over. Just by glancing at the spines, Gabriel can tell that this is one of the most priceless private collections he's ever seen. Talk about a bibliophile Shangri-La! A heavy wooden table occupies the center of the library. More colorful tapestries soften the stone walls here. These texts are in German. You really have to learn the language now. An ancient shield hangs on the wall. These shelves contain books and documents about a Ritter family. Journals, diaries, record books, deeds. Something to peruse extensively when Gabriel has more time. Although it probably won't shed any light on Wolfgang's whereabouts, Gabriel picks up a book from the Ritter section. The book is entitled Maleus Maleficarum, The Witch Hammer, dated 1486. It's a witch hunter's manual from the Inquisition. I'm not sure I'm really interested in knowing about some of my ancestors. These shelves display books on geography. A title catches Gabriel's eye. People's Republic of Benin by Lowell Calley. Gabriel pulls out the book entitled People's Republic of Benin and scans through it. The People's Republic of Benin is an area of rich and diverse cultures and a proud heritage. Before slaving devastated many tribes, this area was populated by some of the oddest, fiercest, and most powerful tribes in tribal Africa. The Fans, the Dahomeys, and the terrible Agris. The book, The Primal One, by John Roots, provides insight into these fascinating cultures. Although it probably isn't connected with the case at hand, Gabriel picks up an occult book. It's a book on lycanthropes, shapeshifters. The book claims that lycanthropy is not uncommon. Supposedly, there's been evidence of apparently normal human beings turning into various beasts throughout history, including some famous trials from the Middle Ages. Fascinating. Gabriel's made a few women turn into beasts himself. There are books on sociology in this part of the library. Gabriel recognizes a title, The Primal One, by John Root. Gabriel takes down The Primal Ones and opens it. In contrast with the peaceful nomadic tribes of Northern Africa, certain tribes of the Southwest were vicious and xenophobic. This part of Africa is called the Red Basin area because of the vast amount of bloodshed that's occurred there over the centuries. In this one area of Africa existed in a perpetual state of war and raiding some of the most powerful and efficient fighters the world has ever seen. Why did this region inspire such violent behavior? To understand, one must look even further back, see ancient roots of Africa by early days.
These shelves contain history books. Gabriel recognizes her title, Ancient Roots of Africa by Earl Lee Day. Gabriel removes Ancient Roots of Africa and browses through it. The ferocity of the tribes in the Red Basin region is traceable to their predecessors. In Egyptian time, 4000 to 2000 BC, this region was ruled by powerful sun worshippers. We know a little about this mysterious cult by the remnants of ruins far older and of a culture far more advanced than any that exist in Africa today. See Sun Worshippers by A. Curate. These shelves contain books on religions of all kinds. A title catches Gabriel's eye. Sun Worshippers by A. Curate. Gabriel takes down Sun Worshippers and scans it. One of the earliest religious practices was that of sun worship. The most powerful cults of sun worshippers lived on the continent of Africa. The African sun god was violent and terrible, and so became his worshippers. They practiced a particularly bloody form of ritual sacrifice. The homeland of this ancient cult is still considered a sacred site of power. See Ancient Digs of Africa by Professor Seymour Shards. There are books on sociology in this part of the library. Gabriel recognizes a title. These shelves contain books on archaeology. Gabriel recognizes the title, Ancient Digs of Africa, by Professor Seymour Shard. Gabriel takes Ancient Digs of Africa and opens it. The most fascinating archaeological site in Africa is the Great Snake Mound in the People's Republic of Benin located 50 miles south of the capital in the Red Basin. Like the Snake Mounds of North America, the origin and meaning of these great mounds remains a mystery, though clearly they were the results of profound and urgent spiritual belief. Unlike other snake mounds, the African example is a double snake mound a small snake ring within a larger snake ring. The mound is thought to have housed an ancient temple. Although archaeologists have explored the mound site, the interior remains largely unchanged from ancient times. This is partially due to stringent government regulations and partially to local superstitions. The local people regard the mound with fear and will not go near it. A double snake ring? Gabriel flips furiously looking for a picture. Oh my God, it's a wheel within a wheel. Gabriel decides to hang on to the snake mound book. The archway is not closed. Gabriel need only walk through it. Guten Morgen, Herr Knight. I'm cooking your Frühstück, a good German breakfast. Please. Feel at home. I found this book in the library. 
I think it might tell us where Wolfgang went. Africa? You think Wolfgang went to Africa? I know he did. Then I shall make you a plane trip right now, yeah? Well, I guess so. Good, good. My poor Wolfgang. You have money for the plane, yeah? I know. We can use this credit card. Terrific! I will go make the call. Then, while we wait, breakfast. Does that mean I get some coffee now? I really don't want to be dead. Can we try that again? I found this book in the library. I think it might tell us where Wolfgang went. Africa? You think Wolfgang went to Africa? I know he did. Then I shall make you a plane trip right now, yeah? Well, I guess so. Good, good. My poor Wolfgang. You have money for the plane, yeah? I know. We can use this credit card. Terrific! I will go make the call. Then, while we wait, breakfast. Does that mean I get some coffee now? Wheel within a wheel. You want I stay here, right? It's a long walk back to the city. Yeah, sure. Wait here, please. I may be a while, though. No problem. I could use a nap. The snake mound consists of an outer ring and an inner ring. Two snakes eating their tail. The jeep was one of several private taxis trying to pick up business at the airport. The driver knew exactly where the snake mound was located and his rates were very cheap. The walls bear ancient paintings, the handiwork of the sun worshippers, no doubt. Vines some as thick as Gabriel's wrist hang down from the damp earth and ceiling. Mummy-like figures in contorted poses appear to be the only residents here. Gabriel wonders, was this a burial mound? Or does their presence serve some ritualistic purpose? The rooms of the snake mound are made entirely from earth formed centuries before into a wheel by sun worshippers. A 
an etched stone is on the wall. This stone looks interesting. Gabriel has the creeping sensation he's being watched. A shadow flickers in the corner of Gabriel's eye. Hmm, it's stuck. An etched stone is on the wall. It fits. A long rod lies in one corner of the room. It's shaped a little like a snake. A shadow flickers in the corner of Gabriel's eye. An elaborate mural with a mask design has been carved into the wall in this room. A shadow flickers in the... Hmm, it's stuck. An etched stone is on the wall. A shadow flickers in the...
this is the last From somewhere off in the mound, Gabriel hears a soft click, then a rumble. Uh-oh. I have a feeling that did something. The mummy-like bodies have animated, and they appear intent on one. I really don't want to be dead. Can we try that again? From somewhere off in the mound, Gabriel hears a soft click, then a rumble. Uh-oh. I have a feeling that did something. I can't. Oh. Gabriel. In person. Now go to it, boy. I can't hold these creatures for very long, and there are more on the way. Go to what? The secret panel, boy. Those creatures are only alive while it's open. Close it, Gabriel, and hurry. I think I found something. Very good, Gabriel. Now stand back. Wow, the inner wheel. Yes, wheel within a wheel. Are you okay? You don't look so hot. I'm fine, Gabriel. The wheel. You dreamt it? Yeah, and you? Yes, I must congratulate you on the Three Snakes connection. I had missed it. You will make a wonderful Schottenjäger. Who? Me? Yes. It is a long path, my boy. I myself have still the last of my three quests to meet. But let us see what is here. You have found the heart of the apple. But it might be poison still.
Uncle Wolfgang looks frail and shaken, but determined to make a good impression for Gabriel. A mummy lies on the floor, apparently having fallen inanimate where it stood when the secret passage door closed. The inner wheel is decorated with mass murals, similar to the ones that hid the secret passageway door. It's nice to finally have someone around who knows what the hell's going on. I know, my boy. I know. Can we talk? Uh, we probably have a little time here. Yes, all right. What can you tell me about voodoo? It sounds as though you have learned much during your investigation in New Orleans. Perhaps you will fill me in when we have a chance to sit down and talk. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I know only what you have told me. They seem to be very similar to the killings in Gunther's journal. Tell me about yourself. This is not the time nor the place, Gabriel. I, I'm sorry, but I assure you, my life has not been all that instructive. What can you tell me about Shatten Jaegers? We have not the time to discuss that here. You have started the path. I can see it in your eyes. You must trust yourself and be true to your inner voice. The good voice, Gabriel. You know it when you hear it. Is there anything else you can tell me about Tetelo? I can feel her presence here. I wouldn't be surprised if she knew we were violating her sanctum. Is there anything else you can tell me about the talisman? The most important thing about the talisman is that it be once again in the hands of the Schattenjägers. Do you think Tetelo's remains are here? I have a feeling that they are, Gabriel. The table's lid fits heavily on the base. At the seams, there are two large holes on either side. On top of the lid is a trough. What's that trough for? I saw that. This is undoubtedly a sacrificial table. That trough is for... a human heart. Oh, that's sick. Look at that table. Yes, it is very old. There is a story being told through the carvings on the side. Can you make it out? Tribesman discovers a snake mound hidden in the jungle. He manages, after much time, to find the secret entrance to the inner wheel. In this room, he bows down to a small idol of some sort. The thing is radiating, like a sun. That explains the source of the Getty's tribal power. They found this mound and the idol in it. Where the idol came from originally is hard to say, but it is definitely older than the Getty's. The idol was probably once kept in this table, but they would have it with them now. It must be destroyed. The lid does not seem to operate. Should we try this lid? I suppose it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm not... Oh, help, Gabriel. I don't think it would open so easily, though. Were we ten strong men?
What about these iron bars? Good idea. Let me help you. Perhaps these holes. There. Let's get the other one. There. Let's try to lift this top. I know it's in there. Yes, it is in there. I have not felt this powerful since, well, ever. Why won't the damn lid come off? It is a sacrificial table. It can probably only be triggered by the proper use of that trough there, with a heart. Oh, great. Where are we going to get a heart? Gabriel, you must take the talisman and be Schattenjäger. You performed the ritual and dreamt of the dragon, no? Yes, I did. But you're the current Schattenjäger. I only did that because... Because you were driven to it. I have done nothing with this title for many years. Even in my prime, I had few cases. Oh, if my life had a purpose, it was to bring you to this point. But I have no idea what I'm doing. It is not a science, Gabriel. It is instinct. And you have it in your blood. Trust it. The castle is yours now. It has many documents and records which will help you in the future. Well, thanks for the confidence. But what about this table? I want you to go into the next room and get a heart from that dead creature on the floor. Will that work? Doesn't it need to be... fresh? Let us try. Perhaps there's some of the old Ritter magic left. Go on. Great. My first job is Schattenjäger. Cutting up dead monsters. Wolfgang! No! No! Tetelo, you gonna pay for this, you bitch! Why did he go to Africa, Gertie? <sighs> no, it's okay. I'm just a little anxious. No, they haven't. I just need to talk to Gabriel. After arranging for a shipment of Wolfgang's body back to Rittersburg, Gabriel returns to New Orleans. He carries with him the Ritter talisman. He has not heard from Grace for over 24 hours, and he could not reach Malia by phone. And although he has some idea of what he is coming home to attempt, he still has no clue where to attempt it. Or does he?
Grace, I'm home. Grace? Oh no, Grace! The note is from Malia. It says, Gabriel, I hope you survive long enough to get this. Tetelo knows you have the talisman. Your life is worth nothing, my love. I fight to save you, but she controls things far more than I. She has taken grace. Return the talisman and leave New Orleans forever. If you don't, I can't help you. Please, I can't bear to see you die. Please believe me. I love you, Malia. Who? Who's there? I have the talisman. Yeah? Good for you. I got a headache. You? Don't come near me. You're dead. Oh, <laughs> was that you at the tube? You should have said something. You mean you weren't dead, you son of a bitch? Do I look dead? No, no, don't answer that. I was searching the tomb. When I heard someone coming, I broke the light and got in the drawer. Sorry I brained you, but I thought you were one of them. Christ, you about killed me. I said I was sorry. Besides, I owed you one for stealing my badge. If it makes you feel any better, I lost my wallet that day. Your wallet? Ooh, I guess you're right. We are even. Like I said. Anyway, we shouldn't stand out here and gab. Someone on the street might see us. Let's go in back and talk. Okay, now let's talk. By the way, I found your wallet. Really? Great. What a pal. I found your credit card. Thanks. Oh, uh, you didn't put anything on this, did you? Who? Me? Yeah, sorry. So, what's up? This is no time for chit-chat. Get serious. All right. Let's talk. What should we do about Grace? Them voodoo people have taken her, the goddamn bastards. We have to find her and save her, and we can't count on the police department for any help. What should we do about Grace? I told you, we gotta find her. We sure ain't gonna help her by sitting around here. So, fill me in on what you've been doing for the past five days. I've been getting smart, that's what. They got me running, I'll admit. But the day a bunch of drum-banging, mumbo-jumbo chanting magicians can catch old Lightfoot Mosley is the day I die. Can't argue with that logic. Now these guys have it wired, I tell you. From the mayor to a couple of major judges, right down to the beat cops. The Gettys are untouchable from that angle. But once I really start digging, it was like I could see clearly. These guys are into everything that happens in this city. And most people are scared shitless of them. Or they don't know about them at all. Let me fill you in on what I've learned in the past five days. Okay, have at it. Well, Malia Getty is the head of the cartel. Dr. John is her right-hand man. I learned that much. You sure know how to pick them, Knight. Uh-huh. She's not really responsible, though, because during these ceremonies, she's ridden by the spirit of her ancestor, Tetelo. You don't say. It's true. 
Anyway, I have something, a talisman, that I can use against them. It'll help, but they probably still have a power source somewhere in their hound fool. Also, this whole thing kind of ties in with my nightmare scene and my family history. My family does this shadow hunting thing, and about 300 years ago... Look, don't confuse me, okay? You worry about all that metaphysical stuff, and I'll just try and catch the bad guys. Yeah, you'd never believe me anyway. Let's make a plan. What do you think we should do? We need to find the headquarters of the Getty Cartel, rescue Grace, and dig up some concrete evidence so that I can take this straight to the FBI. Sounds easy. Uh-huh. Do you have any idea where their headquarters might be? Perhaps. Well, you do seem to have a knack for sniffing out this voodoo stuff. Why don't you see if you can locate it for sure? Meanwhile, I've got some things I've got to do. I'll meet you there later. How will you find it? Damn, that's right. If only I had the tracker from my office. I have it. Really? Good going. You give it to me and leave a signal device at the entrance to the headquarters. All right. What should we do about Grace? I told you, we gotta find her. We sure ain't gonna help her by sitting around here. You know, mostly... Don't even start with me, Knight. I've been through too much for you lately. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Here's the tracker. Great. Uh, don't forget to leave the signal device near the entrance to the Han 4. And be careful. You too. Times Picayune, dated June 28, 1993. The weather service is baffled by the series of bizarre storms that rocked the south yesterday. Twenty died and close to a hundred were injured. The storms only accentuate the bad luck that seems to have gripped the south. The crime rate for the past three days has peaked to unprecedented levels. And there have been 50 reports of food poisoning in New Orleans alone. In other words, keep your head down, folks, and pray that August will return us to sanity. Warily Gabriel reads his horoscope for the day. Gird thyself with mercy. Arm thyself with righteousness. The final hour awaits. There's a school teacher somewhere who's damn confused. The confessional is about the size of a closet and is richly paneled in lovingly oiled cherry. There's a knot hole about the size of a quarter in the wood paneling on that wall. Something about this knot hole looks familiar.
It's moving. I knew it. Gabriel puts the snake rod under the bench for Mosley. All right, Mosley. There's your signal. The elevator stops at a room underneath the cathedral. Express elevator to hell. The elevator returns to the cathedral. Gabriel's stuck now. The elevator opens out onto a small lobby-like room. That piece of art on the wall looks like something the Gettys had transplanted from Africa. The keypad has a button and a card slot. This sign has six snakes on it. Gabriel is in the outer ring of the giddy hound fool. The hound fool is decorated with priceless African art. The archway leads to an interior hallway. This sign has seven snakes on it. The cardboard boxes are filled with voodoo paraphernalia, no doubt. Where do these guys get their supplies? Pentagrams are us? Those two masks remind Gabriel of the ones used at the Bayou Ritual. Ceremonial robes hang behind the other supplies. I think I'll take this wolf mask for me. This boar mask seems appropriate for Mosley, if he ever makes it. A robe for me. A robe for prosperity. This sign has five snakes on it. A painting of a shadowy figure is on the wall. One of the lower, maybe. The whiteboard is blank. This must be one of the business offices of the Getty Cartel. Although Gabriel is no computer expert, those look like high-priced models to him. No expense has been spared in the cartel headquarters. Gabriel's already left all the messages for voodoo folks that he intends to. Gabriel does not have time to sit around. He has to find Grace. The whiteboard is blank. A 
a beautiful rendering of the Gede Veve hangs in the hall. The whiteboard contains what looks like calculus equations. Who knows what these guys are into? This must be one of the business offices of the Getty Cartel. A portrait of a beautiful, intelligent-looking woman is on the wall. She reminds Gabriel of Malia, her mother perhaps. Gabriel looks at the inbox and sees a black record book. This record book might be the kind of thing Mosley wanted for the FBI. A few wall panels up here to open. They probably conceal air supply systems or other control mechanisms that support the underground structure. This table has a trough on top just like the snake mound stone table. Gabriel shivers, remembering what that trough is for. The center of the hound fool is a circular room, apparently used for rituals. The room is made entirely of stone. The giddy hound fool poteau me A pit for fire. I wonder if that takes gas or propane. Rather drums, like those used by the Getty Relayers round the quarter. Okay, I'll give it a shot, but I'm no musician. A door opens in the distance. Gabriel Knight. So it was you on the drums. Uh, no. Malia invited me down. You lie. You will die for that. <laughs> I really don't want to be dead. Can we try that again? Okay, I'll give it a shot, but I'm no musician. A door opens in the distance.
Dr. John is a sick man, and Alta dominates his room, and skin and blood are the prominent decorating motif. A male elephant skull is part of the altar. A coarse palette lies on the hard, uncarpeted floor. Dr. John must enjoy discomfort. Dr. John is a sick man. A plastic card on a chain hangs on the wall. It's locked. The key card has a magnetic strip on the back. It fits. How come the bad guys make all the money? Those balls weigh a ton. I know it's dirty money, but it's for a good cause. Me. I hate to say it, but I can't carry any more. I will. A million or so ought to hold me. A door opens and shuts in the distance. Dr. John must have returned to his room. This sign has 12 snakes on it. Bodies and parts of bodies are kept on the sterile steel beds. The room smells thickly of formaldehyde and is freezing cold. I think I'm gonna be sick. A stainless steel bucket is on the floor. Its contents are better left unsaid. Underneath the surgical lamps is a gurney with a body on it. No one I know. More corpses are stored in wall compartments. It looks like a deep freeze in there. Ugh, I hope those are rubber masks. Human hearts. So that's what they do with them. But why? Maybe I shouldn't even ask. They're used for some powerful gri, gri no doubt. Or maybe that's what Tetelo has for lunch. This sign has eight snakes on it. Grace! I found her! The sound of Radha drums echo through the Hanvur. The ritual must be about to begin. Mostly, you made it. Thank God. I thought I saw you ducking in here. Those goddamn drums started as soon as I got off that elevator thing and I heard voices from above. I have a feeling the mass voodooies are about to invade. I found Grace. I see that. Check her out. 
Then you and I need to find a way to blend into the woodwork, bud. Hey, mostly. No need to thank me for coming, Gabriel. What are friends for? Grace, wake up. Talk to me. Grace does not respond. Grace is being kept in one of the Houndfoo's guest rooms. Grace is lying still on the bed. She may be unconscious. Or worse. Mosley looks very hyped up. His eyes have that weird pre-football game machine that Gabriel remembers from college. Gabriel Knight, what are you doing here, and who is this with you? Who, him? He's a friend of mine, see, and we were just... You will both die. I really don't want to be dead. Can we try that again? Gabriel has in his possession the Ritter family talisman. He'll never forget that it was regained only through Wolfgang's blood. This talisman is supposed to have some sort of power. Grace! Wake up! Grace! What? What's going on? Gabriel! Mosley! Where are we? What's going on? We're in the Getty Cartel Hound Fuller, Grace. The ritual is about to begin. And I'm afraid you're the main course. Is that what those drums are? I heard them in my sleep. I couldn't wake up. Yeah. Makes you want to dance, don't they? Be serious. What are we going to do now? Right, let's make a plan. What do you want us to do, Gabriel? You're asking me? Oh God, we're in trouble. Well, I realize I'm the professional, but you do know more about what we're up against here. Okay, okay. Grace, they expect you to be unconscious, so you'd better fake it. That should put you in a good position when it's time. Mosley, you and I will be with the other ritualists. As for the ritual itself, I'd say Tetelo is our worst problem. I remember from the bayou that she didn't show up until Dr. John blew that drug on Malia's face. If I can prevent him from doing that, we can keep Tetelo out of it, I think. Well, how are you going to do that? I don't know. I'll think of something. Uh-huh. What if Tetelo does show up? Let's just worry about making sure that doesn't happen. Okay, so you're going to prevent this spirit thing from showing up. Fine. I'll take care of the big guy, Dr. John, when the time comes. And I can handle Malia herself. As long as she is Malia. Well, keep an eye on her. For her own good. But don't hurt her. Who? Me? We'll wait for your signal, then. Fine. But you guys aren't going to get far looking like that. Here, it's a disguise. Gee, a boar. How thoughtful. And what are you, pray tell? Uh, a wolf? <laughs> you goddamn wiener.
A wolf. How appropriate. Someone's coming. Grace, get down. What are you doing here? Thought this room was empty. Go to the circle. Now. Talisman seem to have little effect on protecting Grace from this distance. Tetula, you want the talisman? Here, catch. Ow. Go on, get Grace out of here. The talisman will protect you. What about... Just go! You are unarmed now, witch hunter. 
Approach me and kneel. Malia, are you there? She's too powerful. No! Stop! Your father's son, witch hunter. Oh, Gabriel, please. I've got you, Malia. No, you will betray her, witch hunter. I won't let you kill her. Gabriel, you didn't betray me. I've got you. Uh, it's no good. It has to end with me. No! Don't let go! Damn it! Don't you let go! Goodbye, my love. No! I think it's over now. Yes. I'm sorry about Malia. I know you cared for her. You've changed, you know. Have I? Yeah. So, um, are you gonna do it? Be shot in Jaeger? I'm gonna try. Don't worry, though. You'll be back at school, safe and sound. I don't have to go back. Grace! Give up your PhD? There are things in this world, Gabriel, a spiritual path can be more important than a path of the mind. Spiritual path, huh? Well, you're welcome to stay, Gracie. Just as long as you don't expect me to know what I'm doing. This is a historical moment, isn't it? 300 years ago, the Ritter Talisman was stolen by Tetelo. She used to draw her family to power while your family withered. She helped provoke the slave revolt in Haiti. She's probably the reason for a lot of the flavor and history of New Orleans. Good and bad. Now she's gone and your family is restarting. Yeah, it almost makes you wonder, doesn't it? If it wasn't supposed to happen that way. You know, good coming from evil. You think too much. But really, I think the most tragic thing was all those generations of young women, like Maya, Trapped by this large, overriding personality, forced into a life of horror. Yeah, kind of reminds me of living with you, Grace. You know when I said you've changed? Yeah? I was wrong. Are you sorry? Nah.
not true, your father's son, witch hunter. Oh, Gabriel, please. Once and fall. Petalo was right. You betrayed me. It's not over yet, my love. If I go, you go. I can't believe he's gone. Yeah. I'm gonna miss the loafer. He saved our lives, you know. He done good. It's so tragic that both families had to end. That they destroyed each other. I can't help thinking that it could have been different. You can't ask yourself what if. It'll drive you nuts. But a world without shot and Jaegers, it's sad. I guess we'll just have to do the best we can, huh? Yeah. Bye, Gabriel Knight. So long, bud. High in the Sierra Mountains, just outside of Yosemite National Park, is the home of Sierra Online, the creator of the world's greatest interactive fiction. Once again, Sierra is breaking new ground with one of the most captivating, challenging, and intense interactive stories ever created. Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers, is a psychological suspense story of one man's desperate search to safeguard his future by unraveling his past. A generations-old voodoo curse haunts Gabriel's sleep and threatens his very life. Gabriel's search into the roots of voodoo, combined with the images of his own nightmares, provide the keys to unlock the curse and save his very existence. Game designer Jane Jensen and a team of programmers, artists, animators, musicians, cinematographers, actors, and other specialists have spent over a year creating this incredible adventure.
come. Join us behind the scenes for an inside look at the making of Gabriel Knight. Jane began the Gabriel Knight project immediately following her work as co-designer and writer for King's Quest VI, which was the best-selling computer game of 1992. For Jane, Gabriel Knight was a true labor of love. Well, I, I came to see her online because I really loved adventure games. Um, my first one was King's Quest IV, and I loved the medium the way it was. I loved puzzles of all kinds, and I liked the, I liked the graphics. Um, but as a writer, when I came here, I kind of got inspired thinking about um, how far this medium could go. The seer was already at that point changing a lot of its direction, and I feel very strongly that this medium can be as powerful of entertainment as any film or any book or any, you know, comic or whatever medium you have, and I don't think that, um, I try not to limit my thinking about the powerful nature of the story because it's a computer game. I think that we can make computer games that are just as good as any other form of, of entertainment. With Gabriel Knight, Jane also pioneered a number of changes to the familiar Sierra game interface. Uh, we get letters from people saying they think that um, the game assumes too much. It assumes that they want to pick up something when they click the hand on it where they may have been trying to open it. Um, so I, I wanted to try to keep the point and click and the icons, you know, the visuals instead of words and, and introduce a little bit more freedom of action. That and the dialogue trees are, are the way we've done that with Gabriel Knight. I think it's made it a very difficult game. Um, but I hope that people will take a little time to get used to it. An experienced team of artists and animators transformed Jane's vision into the game's distinctive style and appearance. Lead illustrator John Schrodes created an overall art design that borrows from the dark look of film noir, combined with the distinctly stylistic appearance of graphic novels. We use the graphic novel as an influence for the cut panel format to bring out climaxes in the storyline. A talented team of artists created over 80 breathtaking original background illustrations and scores of cut panel and dream sequence pictures. Like the sets of a motion picture, they create the backdrop for the incredible world of Gabriel Knight. Lead animator Michael Hutchison harnessed an arsenal of animation tools and techniques. Over 2,000 individual animations and dozens of cinemagraphic and cut panel sequences were created. The resulting game visuals define new standards for interactive adventures, giving Gabriel Knight the look and feel of a motion picture production. Well, one of the things that we were really excited about when we started work on Gabriel was uh, the opportunity to really make it visually any way that we wanted to. It's the first in the series, and we weren't uh, locked into any particular style with this game. We could uh, we could have the the cut panel um, sequences of stills and then animate those in comic book fashion. Uh, we could have video capture. We could have 3D studio. We could composite all of these different mediums into one um, and, and really get some pretty exciting effects, I think. The programming team integrated the graphics, animations, cinemagraphic sequences, user interfaces, puzzles, dialogue, narration, sound effects, and music, creating the final game. The main challenge for us is the, uh, the, the movie-like quality that we can attain with the CD game. Previously, we would have uh, dialogues would always be in text, and the action would basically stop. Now we have the talking going on while the action is going on, and synchronizing those two things is a new experience for me, but it really gives the game an extra flavor. Before, we took text-based games and turned them into CD games, so we really got a text-based game on a CD. Now we have a truly CD-oriented game. The musical soundtrack has always been a distinctive element of Sierra games, and Gabriel Knight is no exception. Game producer and musician Bob Holmes composed an enthralling soundtrack of original music that sets the mood and adds depth and dimension to the world of Gabriel Knight. My background really is in film scoring, and I tend to really levitate to a lot of the old style uh, Max Steiner kind of film scoring in which using a theme 
is much more valuable than texture. Um, one of my goals for Gabriel was to latch on to a few really strong themes and then use those in different ways. Gabriel is a great vehicle for music because of the, the texture and the darkness and the tone. Um, just gave me a lot of rich things to work with. The musical score is augmented by hundreds of realistic sound effects. This brings a cinematic scope to the game's soundtrack and adds life, energy, and believability to the game playing experience. I really don't want to be dead. Can we try that again? Perfect. The compelling characters that were created for Gabriel Knight took on a whole new dimension thanks to the star-studded cast of Hollywood veteran actors enlisted by Sierra to provide their voices. About Detective Mosley. The Hollywood Reporter proclaimed that Gabriel Knight is the first time an all-Hollywood cast of name actors has been assembled for an interactive movie. Veteran Hollywood producer, director, writer, and performer Stuart M. Rosen signed on to cast and direct the voiceover actors. Rosen has directed hundreds of hours of animation voiceovers and on-camera television. He has been honored with scores of awards, including 10 Emmys. Gabriel Knight absolutely measures up and is far and above a number, in fact, I'd say most things that I've done, um, in many ways. You know, obviously it's a different form. It's not, it's not quote, a film, and it's not a television series or a half-hour um, or an hour um, special. So it's, it's different. It's a different form. But um, it's, it's, I think it's outstanding. I'm very proud of it. I want everybody to see it. With nearly 7,500 lines of dialogue and narration covering all the possible paths the player could follow, this project was the equivalent of directing voiceovers for five full-length animated feature films. Gabriel Knight was Rosen's second collaboration with Sierra. He also directed Robbie Benson and others for the CD-ROM version of King's Quest VI. Drachen means dragons. I wonder if Mosley would know he was being insulted if I called him Drachenbread. Tim Curry is among Hollywood's most talented and versatile actors. Using his sensuous masculine voice, Curry created a distinctive personality for the title character of Gabriel Knight. This is a newspaper clipping about a murder committed in 1810. That murder is an exact match of the voodoo murders right down to the marks around the bodies. Tim Curry as Gabriel Knight. It's kind of an interesting story. We were trying to cast Gabriel, and they had, we were looking at some of the younger actors, you know, some of the Brat Pack kind of people in Hollywood, and uh, I just wasn't getting a feeling that, that they were right for the character. And I kind of teasingly said, well, we need to get someone like Tim Curry because he's a very sensual person who's got a real attitude, but you can't help but really like him and really be attracted to him no matter how you know, off the wall or how obnoxious he's being in his role. The casting director said, well, I know, I know Tim Curry. I've worked with him. I think we could get him. And we were, I was amazed. Curry is also one of Hollywood's busiest actors. He has a starring role in the Three Musketeers movie, which recently opened to rave reviews nationwide. His recording sessions for Gabriel Knight were scheduled around his latest project, a featured role in the upcoming movie, The Shadow. Gabriel Knight is very, very cool and um, impossibly handsome. And of course they came to me. Um, <laughs> um, he, he's enormous fun for me to play because I, I'm a huge fan of New Orleans and uh, I go there quite a lot. So it, it, it had never really occurred to me that anyone would ever want me to play uh, somebody from New Orleans. Um, so I kind of leapt at the at uh, at the chance, but also um, it's it's really very exciting to be part of the this kind of whole new whole new kind of development because um, any new way to infiltrate myself into your minds. Curry has created scores of roles on stage, screen, and television, including memorable performances in the Rocky Horror Picture Show, The Hunt for Red October. National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon, Home Alone 2, and in the television comedy, Roseanne. Ooh, baby, I love 
love the way you move. Mark Hamill is best remembered for creating the role of Luke Skywalker in the Star Wars motion picture trilogy. Since then, Hamill has concentrated on stage work with leading roles in several Broadway productions. He displayed his talented versatility in creating the voice for Detective Mosley. Give me back my badge. Now, Knight! Uh, well, I'm basing him on various uh, uh, people I might have met, a little mixture of Gary Busey with Randy Quaid, with uh, Mr. Anderson, and... Uh, I think he's a, a very pragmatic guy, uh, sort of by the book. Uh, you know, he finds uh, the protagonist uh, to be someone he has to work to catch up with. But uh, uh, it, it's fun, and it'll, it'll all work great, but for the actor, it's very difficult. It's very schizophrenic, because they ask you a question, and you have five responses. Well, wait a minute, I gotta call the chief and see if it's okay. Well, wait a minute, I gotta call my wife and tell her I'll be home late for dinner. Now, wait a minute, I got tickets to the ball game tonight. It's like, it's like nothing I've ever done. And I'm having a great time doing it. Rising star Leah Ramini brought the right mix of wit, sarcasm, humor, and compassion to the voice of Gabriel's assistant, Grace. She provides a balance for Gabriel's sometimes chauvinistic behavior. Well, I did get her address, but you're a little out of your league here, big fella. Among her numerous television roles, Ramini guest starred in several episodes of the hit series Cheers, and currently has a recurring guest role on Evening Shade. Gabriel Knight was her first interactive work. When you're on camera, you could use your face, and you can mug, and you could do things, and whereas when it's just your voice, you, you think you sound great, and you think you're doing this great acting job, but it really just sounds very flat and it sounds like you're reading. And when I have the lines in front of me, I forget that I have to act. So the director will say, okay, do it better this time, but this time act. So I'm not really good at it. <laughs> I'm getting better, though. So, But it's easy with these. Um, I love the characters, so this one I, I find very easy. I see. Uh, by the way, I forgot to warn you, Mr. Knight. The local cemeteries are quite dangerous. Muggers, vandals. I would avoid going there alone, if I were you. While the face may not be immediately recognizable, the voice of Michael Dorn is unmistakable. Best known for creating the character of Worf on Star Trek The Next Generation, Dorn's commanding, resonant voice was a perfect choice for Dr. John. You! What are you doing here? You know, Worf is very distinctive. He has a very distinctive voice and a distinctive way of talking. And he, he, sometimes you could get into trouble by um, all of a sudden slipping into the Worf character just by the way he talks. And, and that, that's probably the hardest thing is, is getting out of it now. It's been seven years, and so it's, you, immediately you go into it. Although Worf, is, his voice is a lot lower than mine, and uh, he's a lot more stern and and uh, serious than I am. The role of Wolfgang is brought to life by the talents of stage, screen, and television legend, Ephraim Zimblis Jr. We must locate the tribe's original African homeland. Her remains might be there, or they might be in New Orleans, buried among her descendants. His performance on Gabriel Knight adds interactive entertainment to his resume that covers more than 50 years in all facets of the entertainment business. This is different in, 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 that, in that you don't know anything. I mean, you, you come in and you, 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 you read a bunch of choices, and you don't know which is the right one or which is the wrong one, false leads, uh, true leads, and so forth. So it's, it's, it a, it's a multiple-choice performance based on, on, on a, a significant lack of knowledge, I think. Gabriel Knight defines a new chapter in the evolution of computer games. The CD-ROM provides the storage capacity required to bring you this artful mixture of industry-leading interactive game design, state-of-the-art computer technology, and award-winning Hollywood performances. This is very entertaining. I mean, the storyline itself is sophisticated. It's the kind of story you would see in a feature film or on cable television rather than network television. And the fact that it's... It, 
I mean, for the most part, people slip the cassette in, they push a button, and that's the end of their job. And I think this is a challenge to people. And, uh, uh, you know, with cable channels, with uh, uh, all the satellite television, everything that you have competing for people's attention, uh, I think this has a real chance to be groundbreaking in its own way. I'd love to see it happen. I'd really love to see it happen because, for me, it's an actor's dream come true. First of all, it's clearly the next step on from video in that, in that you're absolutely involved in the process. So you influence the outcome of the plot. You take the movie where you want to take it. What's really best about it, it seems to me, is that you can sit in your own home and uh, make your own movie. It's pretty cool to me. The convergence of Hollywood's talent with the award-winning story-based game development skills at Sierra opens the door on an exciting new future for interactive entertainment. Jane Jensen's Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers, represents a bold step down this future path. The interesting thing about interactive fiction is there is a plot that continues through the game, but also because it's interactive and because the player is exploring at their leisure, um, you can put in all kinds of side trips that may be just about character or just about some interesting point of history or just about the universe that you're in that don't necessarily progress the story. And I think that makes interactive fiction potentially a much richer form of entertainment. Interactive fiction integrates the best attributes of films, novels, stage, and television. But it's an exciting new entertainment experience, giving you the unique opportunity to actively participate in the story. It really rolls up all of those forms, uh, the dramatic forms, reading, all of it, all together in one ball of wax. And uh, I think this is going to be the new thing. I think this is going to be the thing of tomorrow. And uh, though it's young today, wait till it matures. Wow. Now it's your turn. Take a journey you will never forget into the world of Gabriel Knight. <laughs>